Miller time. Miller time is getting there when it starts. Not early. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to start the regular city commission meeting uh, for July 2nd, 2018. Uh, can we have roll call, please? Commissioner Droski. Here. Commissioner Parnez. Here. Commissioner Miller. Here. Vice Mayor Battle. Here. Mayor Gantz. Here. Could everyone please stand for a moment of silence in our Pledge of Allegiance? We have approval of the City Commission agenda for July 2nd, 2018, including the addendums. I'd like to make that a motion that we approve it with the addendum. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Passes unanimously. Well, first up, this is for our Department of Parks and Rec and recognition of National Park and Recreation Month. Uh, the City of Deerfield Beach is proud to recognize July as National Park and Recreation Month. National Park and Recreation Month is a time to promote the benefits of healthy, vibrant communities. It's time to recognize the importance of parks and recreation in establishing and maintaining quality of life and contributing to the physical, economic, and environmental well-being of our community. Uh, Deerfield Beach is celebrating the many health benefits of outdoor parks and recreation activities in honor of National Park and Recreation Month. National Park and Recreation Month highlights the important role po local parks and recreation activities play in keeping our community strong and healthy. And during the month of July, we encourage people um, from all across the city of all ages to get active outdoors at one of our over 50 parks, our pristine beach, our tennis center, our aquatic complex, and our four community centers. So therefore, I, Bill Gans, as the mayor of the city of Deerfield Beach, in recognition there do hereby proclaim July as National Parks and Recreation Month. And we have our staff here tonight. If they could all come up for a picture with the uh, commission, we'd appreciate it. Thank you. David, if you'd like to speak. 
To the mayor and vice mayor and the honorable city commission, thank you so much for this recognition. Uh, all the credit goes to these wonderful people in the back, small portion of our staff who came out to just be a part of this recognition. Uh, they do it every day. They work very hard to impact the quality of life for the residents here in the city of Deerfield Beach. And we're proud to uh, be able to serve you in that capacity. And we thank you so much for the recognition. Thank you. Thank you. We're very proud of you guys as well. Thank you so much for everything that you do for our city. Yes, that would be very nice. Uh, next, we have a presentation by uh, Commissioner Drosky. I'm going to let you take this if you'd like. Uh, sure. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I thought tonight would be a good opportunity to bring my fellow colleagues here on the dais as well as the public up to speed with respect to Monarch Hill, which is at the corner of Powerline Road and Green Road. Uh, there's going to be some site changes on the northwest corner and Barbara Herrera and Jeff and I forget your last name I apologize it's very long so um, are here to give us a presentation and bring us up to date thank you very much good evening mayor good evening commissioners mm -hmm. staff my name is Barbara Herrera and I want to make sure that you all can hear me correct yes my name is Barbara Herrera and I'm here tonight representing waste management and I want to thank you for this opportunity to come before you and present some brief information as to what's happening at Monarch Hill. As you know, Monarch Hill is immediately adjacent to Deerfield Beach, especially that corner of Wiles and Powerline. Well, to you, it's all Green Road. So if you'll just give us a minute, we have a, we have a very brief presentation, and we'll be happy to answer any questions. I'm here also today with my colleague, Jeff Rocca Priori. So that is his last name. <laughs> I've learned how to say it, so it's a great name to say. Uh, he is the district manager for the landfill at the Monarch Hill facility, and he can answer any technical questions that you have. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, so basically what's happening on the corner of Wiles and Powerline at Monarch Hill facility? Maybe you all have seen, if you've driven by there, you've seen some activity. You've probably seen some, some uh, movement. What's happening? And that's basically what we're here to answer. Well, it's very simple. The Monarch Hill facility is currently in the process of constructing 23 acres in the site. And this cell is located on the northeast corner of the facility, which is exactly at the corner of Wiles and Powerline. The state certified lining system that you will see in a few minutes is currently in place. And there is a geomembrane, geomembrane liner, that's hard to say sometimes, that is to cover the bottom before the material starts coming in. Also, there will be other materials added on top of the liner, and then there will be a redundant layer of the same materials to make sure that the bottom is as safe as it can be. Additionally, two feet of sand is going to be placed over the liner. And once all of that happens, that is at that point that we are ready to fill the area. So what, is, what does it look like? So ladies and gentlemen, that's, it looks like that. Right now, you see the black, that's the geomembrane. Right behind it, we're, we're actually looking south. You see the southern slope, the southern hill that appears right there. Right now, that looks kind of brown, but I want you to know that that's been seeded, and you're going to have some grass growing on that area, so all of that will be green. Um, I don't know if Jeff wants to give you a little bit more information as to what you're looking at in terms of the lining. So I'm just going to let him explain a little bit of the technicalities. Okay. Um. I'm not sure what you all know about landfill liners, but as Barbara described, um, the lining system is a double composite, what we call a double composite lining system. We don't have clay soils in Florida. It's all sand, well-draining sand. So we use ge geosynthetic materials, plastic, basically. There's six layers of materials creating two uh, systems, a primary and a secondary system to protect the groundwater from landfill liquids. The landfill liquids percolate through the waste and hit the lining system and drain to the low points, and then we pump that out. This is standard practice across the whole landfill. Um, but it, the reason it's prevalent for you today is because of the location that we're filling, that we're going to be filling. This is a permitted area. Uh, it's been permitted for many years. We're just now getting to build it, construct it, and, and we're going to be filling this area in August, roughly, when we get the system done. 
Also, what you're looking, what you're looking around uh, when you see the water area, that's a retention area, correct, Jeff? Correct. Okay. So any leachate that may come off the Monarch Hill facility, as you've probably heard that word before, leachate is basically, for lack of more technical terms, which is going to probably anger Jeff, it's garbage juice. That's mm -hmm. right, Mr. Mayor, it's garbage juice. Mm -hmm. So the garbage juice is then pumped to the Broward County Water Treatment Facility. Okay, but what you're looking at right there is the retention pond. Service okay. water, rainwater. Rainwater, correct. So how is this going to affect you all? Well, basically it's going to affect you based on what you see from the road. So we want to make sure that you know that waste management is dedicated to trying to make this as, as well, it's hard to say that garbage is going to be appealing, but certainly we don't want to make it an eyesore for the folks that have to cross that area every day. So what you're going to see from the, from the road is Approximately by August 2018, the public is going to start to see activity in the cell. You're going to start to see trucks going in and out. Obviously, it's not going to be high yet, so you're not going to be able to see the, the trucks as you probably see it on the mountain right now. But you're going to see activity, and you're going to want to know what's going on. As the cell is filled, it's going to start to look more and more like the mound that is immediately to the south. Okay? So it's going to be very similar to that. And additionally, what waste management will do is we will seed it as the slope progresses so that you see green on the, on the outside. And we have planted different trees along Wiles and power line to try to create some sort of visual buffer for the folks who have to drive through that area every day. So in essence, in a nutshell, that's what's happening in the corner of Wiles and power line. Um, do you all have any questions? Yes, sir. Miller. I might have the perspective wrong, but what I'm looking at, does that mean you're going to be knocking down some buildings? No. 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 Okay. So I, I, see, I see the intersection of maybe I'm, maybe I'm a little more south. No, Green Road. No, it's Green I'm Road. I'm going west to Coconut Creek. Correct. I, I, and then um, I think you have some buildings, like an incinerator as we go west mm -hmm. and such actually like you uh, if i may commissioner you can actually see it in that picture okay oh here well, well it won't work on the tv anymore. i don't think it'll work on the screen you see it right there you see that that building right there mm -hmm. that used to be the old incinerator right. okay However, so that, that that now i'm looking that would be north okay no no no, no all right yeah, the south. you're That's looking south. the perspective of the view is southwest you're looking southwest so Right in, in the foreground of the picture is the, is the intersection of Wiles or Green Road and Powerline. Okay. If you were driving um, on the road to the right side of the image, that's Green Road that turns into Wiles and you'd be driving west. Okay. Okay. And the incinerator, the, the Wheelabrator North Broward plant is in the background there to, in, in the upper right corner. So is this essentially we're building another mound? We're expanding the footprint of the mound, mm -hmm. and eventually Correct. it could, instead of making the current mound even higher, we're just out. moving it and starting over again with another mound. Right? Correct. These are areas that were permitted, and we build the landfill in cells. Over the last, I don't know, 10 years, we've been working on the southern half of the facility, uh, filling towards Sample Road. We, we built all of those eight cells. They're all nearly at capacity, and so this north corner this northeast corner is was a permitted area that we've been um, so what you're doing to. here is what you've done before exactly as that as that mound grew those are cells cells that's correct so this cell isn't any closer to the road than the original cell it kind of looks like it is no it's closer to the road which is yeah. why we wanted to make sure you understand what's going on it's it was a permitted area part of our footprint but n but not constructed so in the picture you're seeing us construct it does this have a, a sort of a shelf life where it will get to capacity? I mean, yes, the, uh, the volume, what will happen is what you see in the background, the original hill, mm -hmm. well, the new slope will be right up against the, I uh, wish I can point to it, but where the black liner in this image is ending, right where the water kind of, the, in this picture, everything's under construction. 
but you can see the stormwater retention area. Oh yeah, I, I now and I, right, right I realized where the, the water. Ends. I was thinking that was where the fill was going to be. That's water. That's water. Then the fill. Yes. That's right. It's like a moat around. There's a new. little more than a hundred <laughs> foot setback from the property line to the waste footprint. Okay, I, I think I had the wrong perspective. I thought at first the water was where the new no. mound was starting, but it's it's your moat around my. I call a moat. That's, that's around fine. your new mound. That's that's a very apt description. Absolutely. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Parnas. If that car, the blue car, is on Wiles Road. Yes, sir. Yes. And it would be on the southwest corner of Powell Line, not the southeast. That's, it, it would be on the, uh, south, it, is it would be west of Power Line. And mm -hmm. south of Wiles West of Power Line and on the south side, the side of the of road. Wiles. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, where your mound is and where your main building is. Correct. Thank you. Commissioner Miller, there was a building in that corner uh, many years, several years back that was destroyed. It was not the incinerator by any means. Okay. Well, there were multiple facilities in the middle of that uh, property between the power line and the incinerator. There was a junkyard there, too, at one time, an automotive uh, salvage yard. Uh, and there I, was other, other things there. I do have a question for you. The increased smells that have been happening over the last week that are emanating from Monarch Hill, is that, some, is that your regular release of uh, gases there or is there something else going on or is this the construction part of that um, I'm not aware of the odor you're referring <coughs> to the landfill does em em emit some odor periodically we do a, we do as what we can to, to reduce the odor to minimize the odor um, but I don't think that we could ever be odor free uh, we we spend a lot of money each year in gas collection gas is what we have is what where the odor is what is odor, right? And so we we install infrastructure over a million dollars a year in gas piping to, and, and part of this project is installing the, the piping we'll need for the filling of this area. Okay. And as we build, we install uh, collectors into the waste mass <clears throat> to get the odor before it <clears throat> gets out of the, into the air. Okay. And Mr. Mayor, if I may, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Please pardon me. I was not aware that you were having here some odor issues. So what I'm going to do before I leave today is make sure that you all have my direct cell phone number and certainly make sure that you have that ability to reach me should your residents reach you because that's very important. I can certainly address your issues much quicker with Jeff if you do have an odor issue. And what we do is we basically go on site or Jeff goes on site often to see where's the odor coming from, is it coming from us, is it because one of our wells maybe is not working, maybe our flares are down, and then we address the situation and we correct it immediately. Okay. So please know that you do have that direct line to myself. As, as It's not only my job, but it's my pleasure to do so. What Jeff was saying in terms of odor mitigation, we take that very, very seriously. This area here that will be filled will have wells that collect the gases. These are not wells that collect liquids, they collect gases. Uh, Jeff can certainly explain the engineering of it much better than I can, but those gases are then either burned by a flare, so they're destroyed, or they're captured for our uh, gas to energy facility, which is in Monarch Hill. We also have horizontal collectors, which is again inside the actual structure of the mound as it is being created for the purpose of collecting odors. Uh, in gases, pardon me, but in gases that cause the odors. So again, anywhere along the line, sir, if you or your community feels that it's not sufficient or feels that we can do better or something is happening, please just let us know. Consider this my phone call to you then, because there, there is an issue right now. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, the, other, the other point is, during this construction with the dirt that's going to be, you know, obviously dusted up there, uh, there's been many complaints over the years that that floats and emanates into the air and gets over into a lot of the residential neighborhood just directly to the north. What are you doing to screen this during this construction process? We're uh, using water as the main source for dust control. We have water trucks, multiple water trucks on site. We control the, um, the roads that the trucks and the heavy equipment operate on by spraying the water and, um, and of course, vegetation. In this picture, what you see on the upper part of the slope there is ground yard waste. It's not exposed soil. It's ground yard waste that came in from the hurricane, and we spread it pretty much everywhere. On the south side, it looks similar. 
but we will grass that so it'll it'll have uh, you know be green and it'll, and it'll provide some uh, protection from windblown dust primarily it's water and on the the stockpiles while while we're doing construction we have, we've agreed to uh, moisten the pile so that the surface doesn't get dusty perfect thank you you're welcome any other questions of the commission commissioner Drosky can you uh, the the permitted height for the hill is 215 225 sir. 225 off by 10 feet 225 feet can but you it is currently approximately 215 feet above sea level so can you talk about how long it will take this cell to reach that 225 foot um, mark this cell uh, I would imagine it's, it's got what approximately five years correct it's dependent on inbound volume which we're currently reducing uh, I, I could say that for the next five years it this area will be in operation uh, it may go longer it may go shorter if we get a bad storm and we have to put the debris in this landfill we're trying to preserve the airspace but things happen generally speaking it'll be we'll be in the area for five years and the operational life of the hill is a, is a about whole? 17 years uh, as currently permitted yeah and the other point I wanted to make is um, this activity because I've been asked this before does not have any effect on the garbage rates here in the city of Deerfield. excuse me Commissioner Drosky can we, can we limit the com other conversations please go ahead Commissioner I'm sorry no, I just wanted to make the point that I've received comments from residents before will this affect the garbage rates in the city of Deerfield Beach and the answer to that is no absolutely not no okay. that's all that I have thank you Thank, Thank you, you very much. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank, Thank you for your time. time. Thank, Thank you. you very much. We also have a video presentation. Commissioner Drosky, you wanted the intro? I have to admit I cheated on this. I was at Commissioner Battle's um, town hall for code compliance on Saturday, and I just happened to strike up a conversation with Dave Hunt from our PIO office. I'm looking around. I don't see Dave here. Uh, but he was telling me about a situation that we had here in the city of Deerfield Beach and you're gonna have to pardon me um, because he sent me an email and I'm gonna have to to read from it and unfortunately he typed it so small I need my magnifiers to even read it uh, so I'll read it um, I may pronounce the name wrong Alani Benuelos is a 12 year old girl battling osteosarcoma for the third time. In January of 2016, she woke up one day with a terrible pain on her left tibia that made it nearly impossible to walk. After some testing, they found that the pain was caused by a malignant tumor. She then underwent several months of inpatient chemotherapy for osteosarcoma, which is bone cancer. Her recovery lasted about 15 months. She began to walk on her own in the month of April 2017 and believed that the worst was behind her. But in May of 2017, she began to feel pain below her right knee in which she found that she had relapsed. Seeing the ocean and paddle boarding had been one of her dreams. She's from, the, from Chicago, by the way. With the help of Deerfield, the Deerfield Beach community, her dream has come true. These are some of the businesses and people that help make it possible. Kilwins, Ice cream donation, her favorite food. Billabong donated and transported paddle boards for use. Whale's rib covered her lunch. Anything you want to order off the menu. Lobster, steak, anything, she replied. This is the best day ever. The city of Deerfield Beach, shirts, swags. Mike Brown, ocean rescue, beach wheelchair. Broward Sheriff, fire rescue. Broward Sheriff, law enforcement. Uh, Deerfield District and Boucher Brothers umbrella and chairs. Courtney Palmer from BSO Fire Rescue met with Alani and her family sat this past Saturday morning before they flew out back to Chicago. She asked Alani what her top moment from the trip to South Florida was and she replied, hands down, paddle boarding. was diagnosed in January of 2016 with osteosarcoma, which is bone cancer. She's gone through five rounds of chemotherapy and, um, and it's metastasized up to her lungs. And they just are here trying to give her this moment of happiness and, and 
love. <laughs> so we'll in deep enough to kind of float, and then we'll go from there, right? Ready? Might be a little chilly, so a little bit cold. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> it's actually really cool. She's been through so much. She's just had like a long period of, you know, struggle. All right. To know that a 12-year-old girl wanted to come to Deerfield Beach and one of her last things that she wanted to do is stand up paddleboard. Uh, made, made it all worth a while to see her smile, see her laugh, <laughs> see her family, see her out here just being a kid. When you're paddling on one side, the board will start to turn. We don't have an ocean in Chicago, so anything about the ocean is awesome. She's queen of the day today. Queen of Deerfield Beach today. Totally amazing. Totally. I don't have any more words to describe it. This is so awesome. It's what Deerfield Beach is about. It's what it is. It's We're here to help people give back, uh, do more, realize that someone needs a little help sometimes, and they're there to offer that smile and a hug. I don't think they'll fully understand how special this is to, to us and our daughter. This is a memory we will always have. Yeah. It was awesome. <laughs> It was so cool. Thank you for that, Commissioner. Um, we have uh, our public hearings, Mr. Rodas. Yes, uh, and uh, an ordinance, uh, item number three, an ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Deerfield Beach Amending Chapter 78, Community Appearance Board of the City's Land Development Code. Amending Section 78.1 for clarity in the board purpose. Section 78-2 by deleting obsolete definitions. Amending Section 78-4 to modify approval processes. Amending Section 78-6 to modify submittal requirements and create the special architecture district. Minimum standards for building materials, signs, lighting, open space, parking lots, and landscaping. Amending Section 78-8 to add certain projects that are exempt from the Community Appearance Board, providing for severability conflict codification. I would, uh, I would note that uh, one correction, uh, two corrections on page seven, really just dealing with the description. Uh, section E1 on page seven, uh, third line uh, after it says, but not including Federal Highway East, uh, the word East should be stricken. E2, uh, uh, third line of that, uh, the west of Federal Highway, east to the Atlantic, so the word E should be added there. We have it, it the correct version will be with the clerk, but those are just two descriptions legally. Um, otherwise, um, uh, it's, it's uh, set for the second public hearing, which you may open. Thank you. The city manager. Thank you, Mayor Gans. Good evening. Mayor Gans, Vice Mayor Battle, City Commissioners, General Public, and staff. Uh, just quickly, I know that Mr. Power, our Director of Planning and Development Services, gave a thorough uh, summary of this at the first reading. Would you like uh, Mr. Graham, our Assistant Director, to do a brief summary for the general public? Uh, I think a brief one would be great. Great. Thank you. Good evening, Steve Graham, Assistant Director of Planning and Development Services. Um, unless you wish, I can give you the full PowerPoint presentation, but I think I'll just um, hit the key points that was discussed by Mr. Power at, at the last hearing. Um, staff has identified various changes within the code related to um, the Community Appearance Board and its review of development projects. Um, the Community Appearance Board basically is responsible for the aesthetic appearance of developments within the city. Um, the board also makes decisions with related, related to things such as building elevations, landscaping, signage, uh, lighting, issues, things like that. Um, among the proposed changes within the code are removing some old definitions that we felt were no longer applicable, um, changes to submittal requirements um, for projects and processing, so we're setting out exactly what we want to see applicants submitting, and we're providing them more certainty within the code so that we have you know, it very clear and, and written in there as to what's required. Um, one thing we're creating is two special architectural districts. Um, 
the, the two districts are known as uh, the Coastal Community District, which is that area that Mr Marotis just mentioned from the, the west side of Federal Highway uh, east to the Atlantic Ocean, and then the second district called the Pioneer Grove Architectural District, extending um, roughly from the, the west side of those western properties on Federal Highway all the way through to 95. So one thing to reiterate there is that this is the Pioneer Grove Architectural District. It's the architectural theme. It's not the zoning and development regulations that we've set forth in the Pioneer Grove Zoning District for the downtown. The properties will still retain their zoning regulations. These are the architectural requirements specifically for those districts. The intent of these two districts is to start to create some consistency and some themage coming in through, through new development of properties. Um, we're specifying new language with regards to minimum standards for building materials, uh, lighting, open space, parking lots and landscaping. Again, something that the Community Appearance Board has some measurable things to review projects against. Um, and finally, um, clarification on certain projects that are exempt from Community Appearance Board review, such as uh, painting of structures, single family homes, things like that. So um, that's, that's the, the brief summary of the, the, the code change. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions if, if you do have them. Not at this moment. All right. Thank you. Commission comments before I open to the public. Not seeing anyone from the public here to comment on this item? Not see anybody come forward and we'll close it to the public then. And I'd like to make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion is second. We have roll call, please. Commissioner Drosky? Yes. Commissioner Parnes? Yes. Commissioner Miller? Yes. Vice Mayor Battle? Yes. Mayor Gantz? Yes. Passes unanimously. Thank you. Item four, uh, a resolution of the city. Public comment. Public comment. Well, first. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry. I do public comment. Um, the, this is the time for public comment. Uh, no person may speak on an item that is on the agenda. No comments shall be made related to the personal life or personal qualities of any person, and no language which would offend persons of ordinary sensibility shall be permitted. Thank you. We have our first person signed up to speak, Ms. Pat O'Neill. <coughs> Mayor, Commissioner, City Manager. Um, I'm here tonight because I... I'm so sorry. I need your name and address. For <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Pat O'Neill. 273 Newport R. Century Village, Deerfield Beach, Florida, 33442. Um, I'm here tonight because today I read an article on the short-term rental permits in um, the latest Deerfield magazine. And my question is, I believe I'm understanding this, this also applies to condominiums and not just private homes? Does anyone know is that is true? I, I, I believe it. I don't. I, I don't believe it's limited to uh, to single family residents. Okay. The reason I'm asking is I'm a realtor in Century Village, and currently we have sh 18 short-term rentals for rent, and we have an additional 20 that have already been rented. This law. Um, I'm sorry. This permitting goes into effect October 1st. <coughs> are these people that have already rented, and the ones that are listing their units? grandfathered or will they be subject to this permit too does uh, anyone know there, the answer there, to that no grandfather okay so as a realtor I need to go back to these people that have now rented their 20 units and advise them as of October 1st or whenever that they are going to need to go by these guidelines of permitting yeah yes they, they may continue okay. with their lease this will not affect their leases but they can they need to comply with the requirements right where can I get information on where you get the permit and what's involved in getting a permit? We'll make sure staff gets with you after Okay. This. And does anybody know the rate, the cost of the permit? We'll make sure staff gets that answer okay. for you. Okay. All right. Because this is going to be a big issue with, with short-term condominiums. And that's why I wanted to come up and ask about it because it is in the news uh, magazine. And who could I expect to be hearing from from staff? Do you know? Because I called planning and zoning today and I didn't get the answers. Sure. Yeah, I'll have uh, Mr. Graham talk to you. Thank you, Mr. Graham. We're done with public comment. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have uh, Alinda Kiss. Hi. I just need your name and address for the record, please. Elinda Kiss. 1627 Riverview Road, apartment 312, Deerfield Beach, Florida, 33441. And I just have a question. 
Uh, and it may be really belongs to CRA, but you have a meeting, so that's why I'm bringing it up here. Uh, we live right by Sullivan Park, and there is a pathway that goes now from Sullivan Park to Cove Shopping Center. Now, I guess it was designed to go to the hotel, which, of course, hasn't been built, but we would like to know when we're going to be able to use that pathway to go to the Cove Shopping Center because it is pretty dangerous to walk across uh, Hillsboro uh, and uh, people just speed through the red lights and uh, I'm able to walk pretty fast but I don't make it across in the time that we get the light thank you very much thank you we'll get, we'll get some answers for you on that okay thank you thank you anyone else from the public care to speak Mayor, Commissioners, my name is Joe Hines. I'm at 559 Northwest 47th Terrace. Um, back in April 14th of 2017, about 15 months ago, um, there was an ordinance presented to the commission, but it was pulled, and there was no comment on why it was pulled. Um, and <clears throat> when you bring it up, it says door-to-door -door solicitation cam and canvassing. It doesn't say anything about campaigning, but the campaigning was my, I think, should have been the focus of this ordinance. Um, we have an election coming up in, a, in, in just a few months, um, seven and a half months from now. And um, the, um, a lot of these HOAs out here uh, are, you know, have no solicitation, don't want to let you in the property, they got gates and what have you, and they keep you out. <clears throat> and um, of course, this, this ordinance had all this background that uh, city attorney uh, put forth uh, Supreme Court rulings and what have you, which uh, nullified all the uh, uh, all of the blockage that had been put in place, that probably in, and is still in place, and certainly in place in our city right now. I would I would hope that the city would bring this ordinance back up, pass it, and and uh, direct the uh, city manager to send a letter out to the, all the HOAs inside our city limits telling them that if any uh, campaign uh, person wants to uh, approach their residents that they need to give them permission to do so thank you very much thank you Elise Miller Plotkin 1998 Northeast 7th Street I just have a question I didn't hear at the budget meeting the workshop um, are you planning on doing some road repairs um, on some of the streets? Because especially the one behind the Hillsboro Fire Department, right behind there, that road has terrible potholes. And when the fire department cleans their um, fire engines, that whole street gets so flooded. I don't know how the people that live on that street are able to drive down it. So the people that live there, some of them fixed up their houses. But the street there is horrendous. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the public, please? Emily Lilly, 800 South Ocean Boulevard, Deerfield Beach, 33441. I'm here just to invite everyone to a free concert tonight, or tomorrow night, sorry, at the Doubletree Hotel. It's the United States Air Force Band's Jazz Ambassadors. They come every third year to South Florida and we have obtained them for a concert a free concert a patriotic concert and they will be performing at six o'clock at the Doubletree Hotel again it's a free concert and we would love to have all of you come thank you thank you Anyone else the public Dan Hers, 330 Southeast 19th Avenue. An observation from the budget workshops was that most department heads said that their department increases for the coming fiscal year were the result of increased personnel and health costs. The annual increase in salary and benefits for just the top 20 highest paid Deerfield Beach employees now amounts to almost 300,000 annually. 
But the bigger problem that never seems to be addressed is the annual increases in health care spending. Last year's audited financial statements showed the largest variance to the budget was in insurance costs over budget by $1.2 million or 26%. The Human Resources Director at the same budget workshop said to expect another $1 million increase in insurance costs in fiscal 19. This problem is certainly not new. I looked back on the budget workshop meeting minutes from August of 14 and found the following. William Reed, Risk Analysis Manager, said the risk management budget for fiscal 15 is 1.1 million higher than last year and is primarily due to increases in costs for health insurance claims. But while the health care expenses of the city keep spiraling upward, let's look at what the employees contribute from their pay for health care. For the last four years, the data is available, fiscal years 13 through 16, employees paid $635,000, $639,651,000, and $642,000. So in four years, all the employees of Deerfield Beach combined paid $7,000 more for health insurance. The pay in class study performed by Evergreen Solutions states on page 4-8, the city of Deerfield Beach paid 95% of the employee only health insurance premium compared to 81.6% by its peers. When comparing the premium paid for by the city of Deerfield Beach for employee plus spouse and employee plus dependents, the city consistently paid a higher percentage of the premium for the PPO health plan than its peers. Then this year, the citizens also find out that the city was mistakenly subsidizing retiree health premiums for years by not requiring retirees who turn 65 to go on Medicare, but allowing them to remain on the city's far more generous insurance coverage. Who is minding the store here, commissioners? The citizens of Deerfield Beach depend on the commissioners to watch over our tax dollars and make sure checks and balances are in place to avoid mistakes like the one I just mentioned from happening. We hope this year the commissioners will ask the tough questions during the budget process to ensure that large increases in expense items like health care are not entirely borne on the backs of the taxpayers. I also was very happy that Marty Kyer was invited to address the dear. Thank you very much. Mayor, is it possible to get an extra one minute? No, that's okay. Not tonight. Thank okay. you. Do we have anyone else from the public here to speak? Not seeing anyone, I'm going to close it to the public. Item number four, a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Deerfield Beach, Florida, approving the award of uh, ITB 2017-18-43 for painting and sealing services to Out Projects Corporation in an amount not to exceed $98,618. Any commission comments before we up to the public? Not seeing any, I'm going to open item number four to the public. We have one gentleman to speak, Mr. Glenn Sullivan. <coughs> Name and address for the record, please. Glenn Sullivan, 2377 Deer Creek Trail, Deerfield Beach, Florida. Um, I note that uh, some of this painting work is going to be done at the water plant. And I'm just curious as to what security uh, measures you've added to that contract since um, we've been told in the past that uh, the water plant's off, off uh, limits to citizens, so I would assume that there would be set, uh, special security concerns um, that should be in, uh, in that contract. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Not seeing anyone, I'm going to close it to the public. Commission comments? Uh, City Manager, do you want to address that? Yes, as always, um, we certainly take the security at the uh, water plants very seriously, and we uh, do coordinate with the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, and we see no issues with this project or with any of the other uh, contractual projects that we uh, have performed at these facilities. Thank you. Thank you very much. Commission comments? I'd like to make a motion to approve. We have a motion. We have a second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Um, roll call, please. Commissioner Drosky. Yes. Commissioner Parnes. Yes. Commissioner Miller. Yes. Vice Mayor Battle. Yes. Mayor Gantz. Yes. 
Uh, item five is a, a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Deerfield Beach, Florida, approving a second amendments to the real property purchase and sale agreement with uh, BHP Community Land Trust, Inc., DBA, uh, South Florida Community Land Trust, Inc., for the purpose of developing affordable housing, providing for ex execution, severability, providing for an effective date. Um, this is yet another extension uh, on that agreement. We have been uh, told by the app, by the uh, South Florida Community Land Trust, um, and I, I think we've confirmed that they do have building permits that have been submitted and are uh, waiting for approval. Uh, they have not been approved, uh, but this is uh, another extension. Uh, I can just tell you from a legal standpoint, I reviewed it with a number of, with staff, and while we're uh, not happy to be at this position, not happy at all, uh, we believe that this extension is uh, is necessary. Will uh, because, uh, frankly, because all the other alternatives are, are uh, were deemed unacceptable and will be more costly to the city. So, uh, we are recommending this. We had a good meeting with the uh, South Florida Community Land Trust Inc. Uh, we've attempted to put very uh, specific time guidelines uh, with uh, liquidated damages and a fifteen thousand dollar letter of credit to secure some of the uh, liquidated damages. Um, uh, obviously, the main goal is to get some housing built that is affordable. And we believe that approving this uh, Second Amendment is the quickest way, uh, the most, most efficacious way, I would say, to do so. While the rest of you look up efficacious, mm -hmm. anyone have any <laughs> comments or questions? <laughs> Just very quickly, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mayor, um, as you know, I've been on um, trying to keep on top of this issue because this is not the number one issue that I. This is the number one issue that I'm faced with, basically in District Two, is affordable housing, and we've had this contract out. This is uh, like uh, the attorney said. This is another extension. I met with them, uh, even uh, some folks on their board, and they have assured me that this would be the last extension, 14 months, and even prior to 14 months, I expect to see something out of the ground. I am saying this, and I, I've told them this, if we can't get these houses built within the next 14 months, there will be no other extensions. I don't think it's fair to the citizens, and I don't think it's fair to us to just keep giving them extension after extension. Thank you. Thank you. Um, since item number six is, I believe, tied in directly with this, can we also have a reading for item number six and uh, with the commission's permission? Sure. They to include they, these they, all together, is that all right? Sure. And then we have one person from the from the public to speak on five and six. We'll give you three minutes for both of them if you'd like. Give a total of six minutes. A resolution of the City Commission of the City of Deerfield Beach certifying pursuant to Section 220.1833, Florida Statutes that BHP Community Land Trust, Inc., DBA, the South Florida Community Land Trust, Deerfield Beach Single Family Home Ownership Initiative Affordable Housing Project is consistent with local plans and regulations. Okay. Mr. Sullivan, you want to come up? Name and address for the record again, please. Glenn Sullivan, 2377 Deer Creek Trail, Deerfield Beach. Um, so I haven't done a lot of research into other nonprofits or even if the city should have just sold the land to a developer and um, requested that they do not charge for the land. Um, so they've made little progress even after that six month. Um, schedule relief. I don't understand how that six months could have even been given because they hadn't even hadn't even requested uh, uh, permits, never mind put a shovel in the ground. So that six months was really questionable and um, I hope the staff is going to really watch the building of these houses the next time around because we're at the height of the housing costs now and the loss of these six homes for low-income folks is especially disheartening. If the, if the city grants them yet another schedule extension, I believe the, the penalties are far too lenient. And I believe that the, you should have a schedule that defines or provides a waterfall for each house and an occupancy, occupancy certificate, not the end of the, end of the project. 
so there should be a much more detailed schedule that's that the city and the Deerfield Beach Housing Authority holds them to and I believe that making the damages clause to $500 per day per lot and require a $50,000 letter of credit at a minimum is a minimum because they've already slipped the schedule and if they're that confident in the schedule it should be no problem uh, I believe that they've stretched the leniency of the city and the citizens who need this housing far too much and um, I just wonder how we can have confidence in this after the six months went by with really nothing done. Thank you. Anyone else from the public care to comment on this item? Items five and six together. Thank you. Terry Scott, 624 Northwest Second Way. Mayor and Commissioners, I would hope and ask that we look at this project serious. Uh, it's long past overdue. Look like it's going to be long past overdue again. Uh, we praying that the 14 months would hurry up and come. But while we're doing that, and we're looking, I want to make sure that these homes are given to folks of Deerfield Beach. We should not be bringing in others from other cities, but we should be looking at this city. We should be looking at those that are from this city that need this affordable. And I do pray and hope that it is affordable that we're talking about. And then I would ask if we would put also on the land trust folks to work with the communities to make sure that we're getting applicants from Deerfield. And we're also putting out for the first time home buyers uh, with the city and along with the county, that we could have qualified um, residents, residential folks applying and receiving these six homes. Again, we would not want these folks to come from other areas when it is a much needed, much needed project in this city of Deerfield Beach. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Yes. Hi, Mandy Bartle with the South Florida Community Land Trust. Um, I thank you, uh, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Commissioners for the opportunity to be here today. Um, like you, we are committed to providing and preserving quality, sustainable, affordable housing, and we are committed to building these six homes within the community. We're very excited about the opportunity to work with the city of Deerfield Beach. We think that these homes in particular will provide a lot of opportunity for our residents to work and live um, where near jobs and transit and amenities and services, including the Boys and Girls Club. And we think we can have an impact in this neighborhood in particular who um, we know this neighborhood has high rental rates, low incomes, and we think that we can spark redevelopment for people living in the neighborhood at prices that they can afford. So um, we, ha we value the city's partnership. Um, we've also worked to get other partners to the table, including Broward County. We've received two years of funding from Broward County that we would like to commit to the city for this project. Um, we've been working with other housing counseling agencies and the Deerfield Beach Housing Authority, who's been a valued partner from the start. And we believe by working with them, we can try and target some of their clients um, and do some targeted efforts and education efforts there. I have brought with me today our chair, Giovanni Moss, as well as our development team. Since we've last met, we have hired a construction manager with over 15 years of experience who's managed over a billion dollars worth of construction. In. So Jessica Brody is here, as well as our general contractor, Ed Cancio, who's considered one of the premier affordable housing builders in Broward County um, and comes with two decades of experience and has built over 1,000 homes. Thank you. Commissioners, or anyone else from the public care to speak? We may bring you back up, ma'am, if that's all right. Anyone else from the public? I'm not seeing anyone to close it to the public. Uh, commission comments? Commissioner Drosky? I mean, this is a, what should be a simple issue that is now made very difficult because we have 
the admirable goal of public housing, affordable housing here in the city of Deerfield Beach that's been mucked up by the applicant. Um, these lots, six lots, closed in November 2015 and August 2016. And the initial time period to do the construction was 24 months, which expired in November 2017, and nothing was done. They came back and asked for a six-month extension uh, to May 2017, uh, shortly after I was elected, and still nothing was done. So that's two sticks in the eye to the city of Deerfield Beach. Now we're being asked for a 14 month extension. Uh, I understand that there's some been work that's been done in the meantime, but how many times do we have to take it um, on the chin here in the city of Deerfield Beach? Uh, it, just doesn't add, it just doesn't add up to me. The problem is, and what makes this difficult, is there's no plan B. We don't have a backup plan for this. So if we bail on this, there's nobody in the wings uh, to help us out and and that is very and that's a very sad situation to be in because I don't like being the punching bag uh, of Broward County when it comes to affordable housing uh, but we're also put in a situation where we don't have a backup plan if we say no to this and I know the city attorney is recommending that we follow through and do this but it just doesn't sit well with me um, that you can basically come into the Deerfield Beach twice uh, and ask for an extension and to be granted and nothing and nothing happened uh, that doesn't sit it doesn't sit well with me thank you Commissioner Parnas so far I haven't heard a reason why we need extensions what is the problem with building six houses that can't be done that you need this extension I'd like an explanation. Thank you. Any other commission comments? Ma'am, can you please come up and address that? Thank you. And, and we are, again, we realize that this is an immediate issue and we need a timely response. Um, we are apologetic for any delays that have occurred in the past, and we've assembled a very strong development team to move forward quickly and expeditiously. Um, when these lots were transferred, they had never been built upon. Um, so when we did get the lots from the city, they were unbuildable. So um, there was some time period, there were some liens and things um, while we were under the clock from the city that took some time to resolve. And then when we got the lots, we actually had to change Broward County's platting process to allow us to build on those. Typically, the platting process does take several years per lot if it's never been built upon. Um, we, we were, for the first time ever, got them to change, so it's a precedent going forward for any other affordable housing development, so this would not be a problem for any of our predecessors anywhere in the county um, we have been working in the meantime we did do two community charrettes these projects the designs have received three architectural awards um, from the American Institute of Architects both from the local chapters and from the state um, we have submitted building permits we did a, a public bid for a qualified general contractor and we went back and revalue engineered the project and that did take some time on our ends because construction costs had risen and in an effort to keep these affordable, we did go back to the drawing table um, while we were working with the city staff during permitting. So we have submitted for permits several months ago. We believe they are at the finish line to pick them up, and we are prepared with our team to move forward quickly to get this off the ground and hopefully schedule a groundbreaking with the city going forward. Thank you. Um, I have a question for you. Uh, will these homes be limited to... Uh, Deerfield Beach residents or will they be is the process they would have to be open to everyone even including outside of Deerfield Beach so the process is they do have to be open we do have Broward County funding however we've made commitments to try and prioritize for city residents um, that is part of the reason we're eager to partner with the Deerfield Beach Housing Authority we expect to do a big public outreach campaign um, do education within the city um, we've talked with city staff about doing flyers um, and, and disseminating information to the public within the city so we believe by doing those things we can have a priority and a for the city of Deerfield Beach residents. Okay. Um, my other question is, these homes, will they fall under for Broward next and for the Broward County, uh, based, based on what Broward County qualifies them for, will these be considered low, um, low units or are they low, low units? 
So we are targeting households that earn below 80% of the area median income. So that would qualify in the low, low? Um, that's low income housing. Low income housing, yes. but not low, low. Not very low. Very low, excuse me. But we very hope low. the second agenda item before you is a resolution that would allow us to get tax credits from the state. And in turn, those tax credits would incentivize corporate contributions, which would be direct donations that would allow us to drop the price and make these even more affordable. So if we're able to obtain that, it does not cost the city anything. It's a resolution stating that these are in compliance with your comp plans. Um, and in turn, we'd get the tax credit and we'd be able to raise donations. And those would go directly to on this project to lower the cost for the homeowners. And then we may be able to achieve a uh, closer to a very low income household okay my concern on this and I think that's something we need to go for because while this is only six homes we have plenty of low income housing here in the city of Deerfield Beach we far mm -hmm. uh, have higher than what is required by Broward County rules but we do have a deficit in the very low category and that, that mm -hmm. Well, that's a drop in the bucket with just six homes. That's really what we should be striving for and the whole point of this. And, and uh, whatever the delays were, I agree that, that there's really, while I understand that there was a plotting thing, you did kind of blaze a trail there okay. for other nonprofits. Uh, the other delays that we've had um, really are inexcusable, in my opinion. So um, beyond this, uh, there will be absolutely, I, we, we will have a backup plan for what to do these properties, and it won't include you guys. Yeah, in my opinion, Commissioner Miller. Yeah, I, I and I'd like you to stand up, say up. Um, how did we pick the fourteen months? I mean, are we going to see structures built by that time? Is that the plan? Yeah, and and I talked really about picking up plans. So does that mean, and you put on new staff, and you talked about the problems in the past, mm -hmm. but with this extension, are we going to be seeing? structures made in 14 months is that how you picked a 14 month absolutely and your attorney can advise you it's actually um, we must achieve not only vertical buildings but certificate of occupancy within that time frame okay thank you vice mayor battle um <coughs> excuse me there's one other question if we don't get the funding from the state What's going to be the cost of those houses? Sure. We are committed, regardless of the additional funding, to sell these homes for under $200,000. That is well below the median price in the, in the county um, and well below some of the other affordable housing being built by other nonprofits throughout the county. Um, I do realize that that might not be low enough. It does not hit the very low households, which is why we're going to continue to fundraise, seek donations, and this tax credit gives us an extra incentive to offer corporations to give us additional um, dollars. We have already received two years worth of funding from Broward County's um, Housing and Community Redevelopment Division. Um, it was a competitive award to the organization, and we are committed to bringing those funds directly to the the city of Deerfield Beach for this project in particular. There's one other question. What does $200,000 equate to per month? Sure. So roughly most of the house, houses here, if you think about it just in rough estimates, most people are paying about $500 a month in taxes and insurance. So that's your first $500 payment. Then about for about every $100,000 of mortgage that you have, that's another $500 a month payment. So roughly a $200,000 house would equivalent be the equivalent of fifteen hundred dollars a month if there's additional down payment assistance from the city um, we can drop that cost if we get additional contributions from the uh, community contributions tax credit we can drop that cost and in a best case scenario if we get both of those we believe we could drop that the cost of the house is down to seven hundred and fifty dollars a month we have not secured those funding yet, so that's why I can't commit to that amount. Uh, but I can commit to selling these homes for under two hundred thousand dollars. Okay, thank you. Any other commission comments? Uh, we're going to look for a motion here for five and six. I make a motion that we approve with all the. I. 
We have a motion and a second from Commissioner Parnas for five and six. Uh, we have roll call, please. Commissioner Drosky? No. Commissioner Parnas? Yes. Commissioner Miller? Yes. Vice Mayor Battle? Yes. Mayor Gantz? Yes. Um, I guess A1 is part of this too, is it not? Uh, and, and before yes. we get to that, I just want to let those of you who ask questions during the public portion to be heard, we will get to your questions here uh, as soon as we get through this part, uh, these next few items. Um, well, uh, you know, we'll do the A1 at the end. Number uh, we'll, seven? Uh, well, we did five and six. Now we are on item number seven, a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Deerfield Beach authorizing the city to file a long-range <coughs> erosion control funding request with the Florida Department of Environmental Protection for projects to mitigate beach erosion in Deerfield Beach supporting projects for which funding is requested, confirming the city's ability to serve as a local sponsor. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor Gans. Uh, quickly, if it would please the City Commission, I'd like to have our Coastal Waterways Coordinator, Mr. Patrick Bards, just do a brief summary for the public as well as for the City Commission. Sure. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Patrick Bardis, Coastal and Waterway Coordinator, Department of Sustainable Management. Uh, as discussed at the last uh, regular city commission meeting, um, I brought forward an item for us to develop a submittal for the local government funding request, which is a Florida Department of Environmental Protection uh, funding mechanism uh, that can fund up to 75% of any projects in a critically eroded area, which is the southern 750 feet of our one mile of beach. Uh, what this resolution in front of you is uh, expressing is that whatever project that, that are identified from that request, um, which I will bring forward to the Commission for approval, are basically saying that we, the Commission, will fund those projects. So um, obviously every project uh, highlighted or identified would be brought forward for approval. Uh, this resolution uh, is a requirement of that submittal by August 1st. Thank you. Mr. Bartis, I just have a quick question for you. Sure. 750 feet, where does that marking line start at? Um, it's um, our monument six, which is 6,000 feet from the county line, um, and it is uh, centrally right south of the um, wedding deck. Okay. So it's, it's from the wedding deck north so to the county line? No, south. South of the county line? Yep. Okay, or south of the wedding. You know, well, it's actually just south it's of just Ocean the, Harbor. Just the far so southernmost portion of our beach. Correct. correct? Yes, okay, sir. I just want that for clarification because I. From Van Embassy okay. Suites. Thank you. Yes, sir. I'm going to open this up to the public. Any of the public here to comment on this item? I think I have uh, Tom Connick and then Mary Byringer. Yes, they, that uh, question may. S sorry, uh, your name and address. Yes, I right. apologize. Uh, uh, Tom Connick, 411 East Hillsboro Boulevard. Deerfield Beach, Florida. Uh, as you know, original Save Our Beach and a number of people are concerned about the area south of Wyndham to Fourth Street. If I'm understanding what Patrick said, this does not uh, pertain to that. Correct. Okay. Uh, I will tell you my position is, again, we have our concern concerning the uh, uh, the uh, placing dune vegetation in that area. What's being requested for the area of basically south of Ocean Harbor, from my perspective, I think would be fine. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. you. Mary Byriger, 31 Oak Ridge Seed, Deerfield Beach, Florida, 33442. First of all, I'd like to thank each of you for your service to our community and to our country. Thank you very much. My concern has to do with obstructing the view, obstructing access of our main beach open area. And I'm asking you, please don't plant plantings that will. This, th I this know, has but nothing to do with that, unfortunately. But since point. I'm here, can I please? No, ma'am. No, I can't? OK. But thank you well, so anyway, much. Well, anyway, thank you. Appreciate God bless it. America. Thank you. We'll just, we understand your position, and we just need to keep it to what is on the agenda tonight. Anyone else from the public care to comment on this item? Not seeing anybody coming forward and close it to the public. Commission comments? Yeah, I think it's a great idea. I'd like to make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, we have roll call, please. 
Commissioner Drosky. Yes. Commissioner Perez. Yes. Commissioner Miller. Yes. Vice Mayor Battle. Yes. Mayor Gantz. Yes. Item 8, a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Deerfield Beach approving uh, execution of a contract with Waste Management Inc. of Florida for recycling processing services, waiving the requirements of the competitive procurement set forth in Chapter 38 of the City's Code of Ordinances. Uh, City Manager? <laughs> yes, thank you, Mayor Gans. If it would please the City Commission, I can have both uh, our assistant city attorney and then Ilio Lorenzo from uh, Sustainable Management speak on this item. And this is the item at the last city commission meeting that Mr. Gressick, Director of Sustainable Management, did a presentation about. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Commission. Uh, Anthony Soroka, Assistant City Attorney. Uh, we did speak about this item, I believe, at the last meeting. This is a follow-up. Um, we tried to renew the existing recycling agreement with Sun Bergeron. We got a denial on that one. Uh, this was really the only option left unless you wanted to uh, dispose of your recycling as trash. <coughs> so <clears throat> it's not as good of a deal as you currently had. There's no way to slice it other than to say that. Uh, but the best thing I can tell you is we have a four-month out. If there becomes to be a better option, you can terminate for convenience in four months. Uh, additionally, you have a most favored customer clause in here as well. Uh, I think uh, Elio can answer any questions operationally. I can answer any questions about the contract. You did go out to bid for this, is that correct? Yeah, the city went out to bid, uh, let's see, about six months ago. We went out to bid for both solid waste and recycling, and we got no bids for recycling. And Coral, Springs uh, Coral Springs went out to bid, I believe, twice and got no bids for recycling. You're not the only, uh, the only city in this position. Every city's struggling with recycling right now. Uh, and this just happens to be the best option that staff is recommending, aside from disposing this garbage. City Manager. Yes, thank you. And also, uh, for members of the public that were not at the last meeting, this is not a state of Florida issue. This is happening across the country as a result of the issues with the China um, tariffs, as well as about a year ago, they decided, year and a half ago, they decided not to uh, take recycling from the United States anymore. So even cities such as Portland, Oregon, which are considered to be very uh, progressive, have stopped recycling cert certain items. Thank you. Yeah, and I should mention, we have it as a waiver in here as an abundance of caution. We did bid it out. Uh, we just didn't get any bids, but because there was a lapse in time between when we bid it out <coughs> and you're seeing it, we did put it as a waiver just to be conservative under our code. Just to make it clear, our options are basically throw our recycles away into the landfill or take this deal. You can, right, you can dispose. Or let them pile up in our in our in our, uh, one of our yards here. If you can deal with all the calls that you'd be getting as a result of uh, letting it pile it up, yeah, I guess you could say that's an option, but yes. I didn't uh, know whose yard, but. but. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Um, yes, you can dispose it as you can dispose it as garbage at $41 and change a ton. Uh, you can take it to waste management for recycling. The only other option you may hear other cities say is, oh, well, we're taking it to the wheel abrader plant. Uh, we did flesh that out with staff. Uh, wheel abraders, the distance makes it uh, uneconomical for you and inefficient. Uh, so if you hear other cities say, oh, we, we got a wheel abrader option, it's because they're probably in the central or the south part of the county. So that's feasible for them. It's not feasible for you. Okay. City manager, one more time. Yes, thank you. Just quickly. Um, we did look at all the short-term alternatives, whether it was taking it to the incinerator, but as we indicated at last week's budget workshop, over the next year we are going to plan on uh, bringing forward some recommendations to the City Commission about how to handle this long-term. So we look at this contract as very short-term. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone from the commission have any comments? Yeah, I, I have a question. All right, let's use the light system, guys. I did. <laughs> okay. Let us suppose for a moment we suspend collecting recyclables. How much money will the city save? About a million a year? 800000 What? 
Elio can give you the, the precise number. Uh, okay. But you're still going to pay to dispose of it as solid waste. Understood. Uh, right. So I don't know that there's going to be any, any savings uh, per se. It, it may ac actually cost you a little bit more, uh, depending on what the recycling market, the average market value of the recycling market on any given day. It fluctuates. Uh, so what we get in recycling revenue or what we pay them uh, to recycle, what we pay waste management to recycle will fluctuate from month to month. Uh, but to d dispose of it as garbage, it's uh, what forty-one dollars. Yes. Then but if we suspend, um, if we suspend the, the pickup of all of recycling, and we ask you not to recycle, and you put it in the garbage, we, it would eliminate routes. So we're looking at about four routes. Uh, it's an average of net savings of eight hundred thousand dollars a month because you won't use a recycling route. You'll get rid of the truck. Eight hundred thousand dollars a year. I apologize. Excuse me. Yeah. Okay. Eight hundred thousand a year. Yes. Oh. Okay. It'll eliminate basically four routes with employees and you know all the operational costs associated with it. Okay. So the question comes down, do we want to spend $800,000 extra or not, economically? And we don't know for how long waste management will receive recyclables. Yes. I have another question for that. How much will it cost us if the recyclable materials are contaminated? Let's add that in. So that's a good question, uh, Commissioner Parnas. There is a uh, there is a contamination fee uh, within the agreement. Uh, above 10 percent, basically the way I understand it is you get the first 10 percent contamination for, I guess they would say for free. It's not really a great term, but you don't get charged for the first 10 percent of contamination. Uh, but above that, you do get charged. Uh, it's sort of a complicated formula that they have in the agreement. Uh, but basically what happens is all your various recyclable materials, uh, there's percentages for each one of those as part of the waste stream, and those numbers get added up. Like let's say plastic is going for $20 a ton, and it's 10% of the stream, that's $2. Those all get added up, and then your contamination gets subtracted at the end from what you would normally get in terms of revenue based on how contaminated it is. The other night, the opinion from sustainable management was that the industry is dying. It's pretty low right now, and it doesn't look like it's going to pick up in the future. I don't see waste management dropping its prices if they're the only ball game in town. Uh, I can foresee this costing us a million and a half down the road to two million dollars a year to be Mr. Nice Guy rather than dumping it, especially since we have a problem with citizens who love contaminating recyclables so that it can't be used and we get charged for it. I have a hard time digesting spending that kind of money. Thank you. Commissioner Drosky and then Vice Mayor Battle. Um, Commissioner Parnas actually brought up a lot of good points in a couple of short sentences there that I would love to elaborate on, just not not at this particular moment, but I probably will after the public portion comment. What I'd like to get out of staff right now is what are the processing fees we pay now versus what are the processing fees that we would pay under the new contract? So the processing fee you pay under your existing Sun Bergeron contract, it was a $50 processing fee adjusted for CPI. So I think it's at about $51 and, what is it, 51 even? $51 is the current processing Actually, fee. Mr. Lorenzo can yeah. answer these yeah, questions. Yeah, I mean, the, under the Thanks. current contract, the one that's expiring was $51 we were paying right now. The net increase under the new contract is 45 But under the old contract, there was also a floor, meaning that you know, if you got the zero on the AMV returns on your average um, market uh, value for the commodities, you didn't pay disposal. But under this contract, there is no floor. So that's where the difference comes in. Uh, you would pay it the difference. So if right now there's a $45 difference on the processing, but if the AMV is negative because the market value is not up to par, then you could pay it higher than that. And right now I don't know the exact number because we haven't entered this contract yet and you know, we're just going based on proposal okay can I continue mr. Mayor? yes because I, mean, I don't think it was I don't think it was clear I understood what you said but it's fifty one dollars now but you said plus forty five so it's not forty five dollars it's fifty one plus forty five which is ninety six correct I apologize it's ninety six overall uh, so and the AMV which is the adjusted mark value I mean that is declining every 
every day. I mean, we used to get, what, $50 a ton uh, for our recyclables, and now that is diminishing to the point where the AMV could potentially be, be zero, because what's happening is in some of the backup materials that, I, I, that we have in, in my own independent research is, for example, glass. Um, there is no market for glass. Glass is a zero, if not negative, uh, number, and glass uh, contaminates uh, the existing recycling that they have. It breaks um, and it contaminates paper. It shreds the paper, which makes the paper worthless. So glass is a glass is a, a um, is, is a negative component in the AMV. And and where all this is going is, you know, do you take glass out of the equation? Do we say, okay, we'll recycle, but we won't re recycle glass? Okay, I'm sorry, Bernie. I'm going to get into your points now. Um, but we've we've had this mentality for years. We've been ingrained as a society that it is good. Um, for our environment for us to recycle. And now we're being told economically it is not in our best interest to recycle because it would be cheaper just to throw it in the, in the landfill. That's basically the point in time to where we have, where we have come. I think it's exhibit D to the contract, um, commits uh, waste manage management to participate in some form of public education. So maybe we can turn this around. I don't think this is going to, to turn on a, on a dime. Uh, because one thing is, and I, I see it, is that people, when their recycling bin, excuse me, when their garbage bin is full, they just put their garbage in their recycling bin. And what that does is it contaminates the entire can. If you put your pizza box in your, in your recycling, the grease from the pizza um, can contaminate your entire, your entire bin. So you have this huge bin of recycling, and you put a couple items in there that you're not supposed to, and the whole bin, you basically wasted your time because it's going to end up in the landfill. That's that's a public education component. Component. Have you fleshed out any details? A long-winded question here. Have you fleshed out any details to the exhibit D to the contract as to exactly what the public education component will consist of? Uh, at this moment, I cannot answer that question. I don't have the exacts, but there's going to be some public outreach. It's going to be one of the focuses uh, because contamination is a major issue and it's been a major issue all along um, since you know since recycling. So um, I don't have that answer for you in regards to what specific uh, outreach we're going to do. But yes, we're definitely going to be some outreach in regards to combination where the contracts, you know, from waste management, but also on our own. I mean, Mr. Mayor, if it's okay, I mean, waste management is, is here. I don't know if they're prepared to be put on the hot seat, but um, maybe not exactly at this moment. We can save our questions uh, and kind of build them up. but. If they'd be willing to engage in the dialogue, that may that may help. Uh, but that's, that's your I'm, call. I'm going to assume that you, since you're willing to walk towards the podium, you will be able to take questions yeah, later great. at some point. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, I'm going to reserve for later. I have more, but I'll reserve for later. Okay. Vice Mayor Bell. I have a question. We're, we're losing eight routes. What does that What does that mean time-wise for us getting the trash picked up? Are, are we our citizens to expect that uh, you know we won't get our trash picked up in a timely fashion? Or no, if if we park those four trucks, you're looking at three residential trucks and one commercial. Um, you know, we would definitely make some adjustments on the route. It, it's the same amount of stops. The, it's just different days of the recycle gets picked up on. It's not going to add much because you're not traveling out of the way. You're still going to the same address. You just may have more disposal. So for right now, what should I be telling folk who are interested in? You know, there's, there's nothing really to tell people. But uh, the thing that concerns me is the uh, con contamination, like uh, Commissioner Drosky said, with the bottles. And I've been trying to personally get the word out, don't put the bottles in your um, recyclable uh, bin or whatever. But I think we, uh, at this particular point, you know, Mr. Uh, City Manager, we really need to put out something uh, very early about what to do with that glass. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, City Manager? Yes, just quickly. Before we stop any recycling routes or even change any of the materials that we collect, we would first come to the City Commission for your approval. Uh, currently, uh, Sustainable Management is working with their in-house staff, Ms. Hillary Marshall, along with uh, Public Affairs and Marketing to determine how best to get that information out so we capture a wide aud <coughs> audience and hopefully we can uh, count on Waste Management to help us maybe get it on TV and radio, which is a more expensive medium. Thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, I'm going to open this up to the public. Anyone from the public here to come up and speak? <coughs> Elinda Kiss, 1627 Riverview Road, Apartment 312, Deerfield Beach, Florida, 33441. And I wondered if we might want, if it would be useful for us to go back to the separation of recyclables so that we have a bin for plastic, a bin, a bin for paper. I don't know if that would make it cheaper or have any impact at all. And this is the first I heard we can't recycle glass. I've always made sure I had glass recycled. So thank you. Thank you. Anybody else from the public? <laughs> Elise Miller Plotkin, 1998 Northeast 7th Street. I have a question. Should we do what New York City did at one time years ago, like give people um, five cents for every um, can that they they returned or plastics? They would put it in a machine and they would get money because for all the plastic bottles and things. Like if people, we would have um, all the homeless and everybody cleaning the streets and collecting all the plastic. Um, or if we res um, if they were able to return all the cans, that could be <coughs> brought somewhere so it could be recycled. But I agree. Um, how is the public going to know that they have to separate all these items? Um, that takes a lot of communication. Also, if there's any way that we can encourage our businesses to only sell certain products or sell, you know, only use paper products, that would help. A, a, a lot also, but this is a major problem all over the world. Thank you. I'm going to let Mr. Hers come up <laughs> in case anybody tries to jump ahead of him. I don't want to wear him out tonight. Dan Hers, 330 Southeast 19th Avenue. Um, just for the commissioner's um, edification, the uh, four-page backup that um, I, I believe uh, Mr. Gresick put together is actually excellent. It's got all the numbers that you need, and I'm going to be referring to this, but it, it really was a very, very good backup, and I, I do want to compliment uh, whoever. I assume it was him who put that together. Um, it does seem to me that waste management is using the power of their monopoly to force municipalities to sign up for their recycling services. And I hope we in Deerfield Beach don't fall into this trap. The market forces that created this situation are here to stay for the foreseeable future. Instead of curtailing the recycling program, we should temporarily dump the recycled garbage with our regular garbage. The same garbage trucks that pick up our regular garbage could pick up the blue recycle cans. That way citizens will not get out of the habit until the market for recyclables improves. In the meantime, according to Mr. Gresick, we will save $800,000 minus the $300,000 added costs of disposing the 7,500 tons of recycled garbage. That $500,000 annual savings sounds like a far better alternative than succumbing to waste management's blackmail and paying them $400,000 annually. I'm sure we could also reassign the recycle workers so we would not have to lay off anyone. In the meantime, the city could educate citizens on what should be recycled to avoid contamination, and the city could even set up a drop-off center for people who still wish to recycle uncontaminated items. I want to read an article that appeared in today's FloridaBulldog.org. It's very short, and it explains what the city of Sunrise is doing, and I want to quote here. Sunrise, which generates 5,000 tons of recyclables a year, has balked at piggybacking on the Coral Springs contract, citing certain unpalatable contract provisions regarding contamination of material collected for recycling that could drive the city's costs even higher. It is intolerable contract language because it creates too much risk, said the city of Sunrise uh, city manager. So what will Sunrise do if the offending language cannot be negotiated away? 
recyclables that residents now set aside in separate bins will end up at the same place where its municipal solid waste and bulk trash will go as of Tuesday tomorrow. So, thank you. Thank you. Glenn Sullivan, 2377 Deer Creek Trail, Deerfield Beach, Florida. Um, just two points. I think the, uh, the contamination fee is the wild card in this. It's really unknown what that would do to our budget, and it's probably um, something that we've seen in almost all of our trucks. So if we do continue, um, I would expect to see some significant fees for uh, contamination. And the other thing is I just... Um, up on what, what Dan said is we can put bins at the drop-off center for aluminum for plastics so those people who want to recycle and that the city will get a return on it can still collect um, at the city drop-off center I come up from a rural uh, city or town where they didn't have pickup at all we drove to the dump so it's not a big deal yes um, Diane Emiot, uh, we own a property in Deerfield Beach. Your address, please, sorry. Um, the property that we own is 157 Southeast 7th Street, Deerfield Beach. My question is, if you do this plan, how many workers would lose their jobs? And also, what is the total dollar amount of their salaries? Is there a plan to lay them off, or would they be reassigned to another thing, and when would this take effect? Any other questions for the public? <clears throat> March Hilton, 1101 Southeast Fifth Court. This might be crazy thought, but <clears throat> if people that have a lot of recycling, if they think, you know, well, I don't want to put this in my garbage can because it won't fit because you know, you have two cans, one for the garbage, one for recycling. Maybe I would just put this out in a big plastic bag in bulk trash, which I don't think would be a good idea, but it was just a thought that I had that maybe people might do. Thank you. Thank you. Terry Scott, 624 Northwest Second Way. Mayor and City Commissioners, I would pray that we would see a way to, that we don't lay no one off, that no one goes jobless in this process. Um, whatever we can do, if it's drop off, rerouting, no one lose their jobs. That's all I would ask, that we will please hold fast to every job that we can around the city of Deerfield Beach, that none of our employees right now lose any of their jobs, that they will not lose any of their benefits. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? No, I see anyone from the public. I'm going to close it to the public. City Manager, do you want to address some of the points that were made? Or City yeah, Manager? I'll try to do it. First of all, we're not recommending tonight that we do any layoffs, and we're certainly not recommending tonight that we stop uh, uh, recycling routes. Uh, you know, we have the city attorney and I have met and talked with uh, the city of Sunrise. Certainly every city is handling this differently, looking at our constituency uh, and uh, the popularity of recycling in this city. We did not want to bring that forward at this point. That's something that I don't think the city commission would want to just jump out there and say we're going to stop picking up recycling cold turkey uh, again we're going to be working as quickly as we possibly can to find an alternative solution to this and um, I'm not sure what the other questions were off the top of my head uh, uh, there was again. a point regarding the separation of recyclables yeah, again, that's something that we would uh, come to the city commission, which probably hold some type of presentation, maybe not a standalone workshop, but something before this board uh, before we even did that. Um, one of the other points, 
you know, there's some of the points that were made tonight is trying to encourage people to recycle. That's the problem. Once we get people to start recycling, we've got no place to put it. And the cost of being able to take care of that has gone through the roof. And this is, in my opinion, a, a, a gluttonous mon monopoly that never should have been allowed. And I do have a question for waste management regarding that. The, in 2015, when you were going before the state uh, and your anti and the, and the now infamous letter that was conveniently left out uh, of discussions until it was put out recently, um, December 15 letter that listed a half dozen agreements or commitments by waste management. One of them was uh, that Broward municipalities would be allowed to renew their five-year single stream recycling contracts when they inspired on the same terms, conditions, and prices of the initial term. Why are you not honoring your word on that? Good evening, Mayor. Again, my name is Barbara Herrera. I am here tonight representing Waste Management Inc. of Florida, address 2700 Wiles Road, Pompano Beach, Florida, 33073. Mr. Mayor, that's actually a very good question because there is a very large amount of misinformation there. In 2015, Waste Management purchased the assets of Sun, which is part of the JV to which you all belong. The, con the, so the contract that we have for the JV to process the materials was part of a subcontract that was reviewed by the Attorney General and the um, Department of Justice. That contract does not allow us to raise prices for MSW, <coughs> excuse me, pardon me, or for um, our CND, construction and debris. However, the subcontract does have a provision that allows us to raise prices for recycling depending on market values. That's why it was never rejected by the Department of Justice or the Attorney General's office. The letter specifically says that they allow us to renew their five-year single stream recycling contract when they expired on the same terms, conditions, and prices as the initial terms. I, I don't know where the misinformation is, but that sounds pretty clear to me. That letter specifically addresses the MSW and the CND portion. Not so the recycling. Not single stream recycling. When it specifically says single stream recycling contracts, it doesn't it didn't say that? The subcontract that we have with the joint venture mm -hmm. specifically has a section that allows uh, waste management and the joint venture to change prices for recycling processing depending on market conditions. And that's in a separate letter or in that same letter? That is in the subcontract, sir, which I would be happy to provide for the city of Deerfield Beach okay. for your review. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Do you want to have any other comments or questions for waste management? Can you comment on the oh. Commissioner Drosky? Um, the public outreach uh, portion of our contract? Yes, absolutely, Commissioner Drosky. If I may um, hand to the city clerk some information that I have. So what I just handed to the city clerk is not from waste management, or rather it's from the state of Florida. It's from their website called uh, Florida, uh, what is it, FloridaRecycles.org. And I wanted to just show you this because this is not a company-specific uh, target, if you will. This is a state of Florida website. There's very, very simple. A gentleman who spoke earlier said that the if you will, the wild card will be the contamination. In order to get the prices down, in order to reduce pricing for the city of Deerfield Beach, contamination needs to be reduced. So what is contamination? Well, a lot of folks don't really understand what that means. They think, well, is contamination, is it contamination with chemicals? Is it contamination with um, uh, food products, et cetera? Well, I'll tell you what it is. Contamination is basically when you put together items in the recycling bin that are not necessarily recyclables. So there are some cities in Broward County which you would be amazed to learn have contamination levels that are higher than 50%, which means that more than 50% of the materials that are in their bins has to end up in a landfill because it cannot be recycled. So one of the purposes, should you all approve the agreement tonight, one of the purposes for Exhibit D of the contract is public education. Waste management has extensive public education programs currently going with its partner cities. What do we do? The message is going to be very simple, much along the lines of FloridaRecycles.org. Aluminums, tin, plastics, and cardboard and paper. And that's it. That's it. Somebody else said, I thought garbage, w uh, pardon me, I thought glass was recyclable. 
Well, yes, you can recycle glass. But right now, glass has a negative value. What we are facing right now, ladies and gentlemen of the commission, is that the products that are being recycled have a value that is less than the cost to produce it. I mean, that, that's where we are. And it's not simply waste management. It's all of our competitors that are in the same boat, if you will. That's why nobody has issued bids for the numerous solicitations for recycling that have gone out. Uh, we have, I personally have attended the pre-bid meetings, and I've notified the, the organizations that 25% uh, contamination level is simply too high. It's too high for us to process because we are literally operating in the negative at that rate. We, we can't operate. Uh, so where are we right now? I believe, and I, I, I know that with a strong communication message that waste management would work with your Department of Sustainability to your people, we would be able to reduce that contamination and therefore, such as Commissioner Parnas said, he's concerned about the cost, we would reduce that cost significantly. At the same time, you would still be able to recycle and make sure that items that can be reused don't end up in the landfill. Commissioner Parnas? I don't mean to sound flippant, but we don't have a garbage police. How many years have you been collecting recyclables? Well, me? No, not personally, not but personally. Well, uh, waste man. I don't know how many years, sir, but many, um, many years. Many years. Yes. If the public hasn't been educated to handle it properly for the last 10 years, What makes you think that they're going to follow instructions now? You know what, Commissioner, that question, if, if, I may, um, if I may, sir, has been brought to me on several occasions by several cities. We haven't done it right so far. People don't know what they're doing. For the most part, people's intentions are, are good. People want to do good things. But other times, you have folks who have garbage bins that are overflowing, and they use a recycle bin for garbage. So how do you, how do you curtail that? I think it's a matter of policy. Uh, you mentioned enforcement. You're right. You, the city of Deerfield Beach does not have enforcement. Some cities, especially in the Northeast and in the West Coast, they actually have enforcement. They actually have co-compliance people coming out, lifting the bins, and looking inside and seeing what's in there. I don't know if that's the route that you all want to take. Uh, what else can we do? Well, somebody mentioned, instead of doing single stream, let's do the two bins. That's easy enough. I know that Palm Beach County does, and Palm Beach County has high recyclable rates. Well, that's not the panacea. That's not the cure-all either, because those bins are open to the environment, to the, to the, you know, are open. And if it rains, it gets wet. And also, it costs more money to have a driver and another driver come out, pick up the bins, dump them. It takes longer. You may need more routes. So you've got to balance it out. So what do we do? I am not at the point of saying people cannot be re-educated. People cannot be told, this money is coming out of your pockets. This is your city. This is the money that could have gone toward other projects, other events, community partnerships, et cetera. So what can we do to reduce the cost of the city? I think education, aggressive education, which is what I am doing now with the city of Coral Springs, what I'll be doing with the city of Coconut Creek, and hopefully what I'll be doing with the city of Deerfield Beach. Vice Mayor Battle. That's all well and good, and I'm, I'm, I'm a great uh, proponent of uh, education at all uh, costs. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, Mr. Mayor, I've been sitting here just really stewing over all of this stuff. Uh, we take a lot of time and effort up on this day as uh, going over these items one way or the other, trying to make the best decision on behalf of the citizens of Deerfield Beach, only to have some company of, I might as well say it, some money-grabbing company or whatever come here and uh, woo us over and we sign a contract with you and at the end you want to change the terms of the contract. That just makes me mad. You know, uh, it happened uh, with the uh, um, hurricane. We thought we had a contract tracked in good faith and all of a sudden they can't do it for us one way or the other. Now, you know, because what you're doing, uh, you assumed, um, if you have this monopoly, you assume everything that Sun Bergeron had or whatever the case may be, and who gets the shaft? 
the cities and their citizens. I'm just tired of it. I don't know that there's anything that we could do about it one way or the other. I know we put a lot of effort in trying to make the best decisions on behalf of our citizens, and it just makes me mad when something like this happens. I, you know, you can take that and do whatever you want with it. I just had to get that out, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, and Ms. Herrera, this is obviously not directed at you personally. This is waste management. There's a reason waste management didn't have the contract in this city. All right? There was a reason. Prices weren't right, plus your tactics were horrible. And got to give you credit. What do we do? Let's go out there and behind, let's buy out the competition. And that leaves all of us kind of shafted. What, what's happened with recycling markets, not the false the waste management, but I feel that you're taking advantage of it in a vulture-like methodology, which is no one else is taking it in. We will do it, and we will put these fees, these additional fees with contamination, which means like plastic bags. Plastic bags get stuck in the, in the, in the machinery, ties it up, and that's a problem, and we're going to be hit with fines. How easy is it to get a plastic bag in your recycling bin on accident? happens all the time uh, unfortunately and so that's probably one of your high rates but that's a very simple easy way to contaminate your recyclables yes. um, I, I don't have a lot of respect for the business practices of your company quite frankly that's my opinion um, I've seen it when we negotiated the contracts originally and I'm seeing what I think is someone taking advantage of the current market and leaving us no options but the shaft us extraordinarily um, we do have a four-month termination we have two choices here one is to go along with this because it's the only show in town or two we say no and then we're going to have to explain to residents here out trying to explain to them why we're just taking the recycling that they're putting together and dumping it in the landfill now when it comes to savings the savings excuse me and i'm gonna have you step aside so i can talk to our staff the savings are if we eliminate the routes correct okay but there's a potential of the high risk obviously with the contamination fee but it's only when we eliminate the routes that we're going to see a savings. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, it would have to be elimination of the routes. So when the suggestion was made, we let people to keep putting it in their blue recycling bin and we pick that up. If we keep those routes going to still pick that up, even though it's going in the landfill, we're really not saving ourselves any money. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Because I do like the idea of saying, of getting people, keeping them in the habit of it, let them still put it in the bin like they're going to do. but. We're not saving money if we keep picking it up the way we always have. So um, everybody has been kind of put in this horrible situation. It's not a good one to be in. And uh, it's a damn shame that we're here. So, but we're going to have to make a decision here. City Manager? Yep. Thank you, Mayor Gans. Just quickly, many cities, and I can't speak specifically to where Sunrise's private hauler takes the trash, but it's probably to the south incinerator. So that would, in uh, very general terms, as far as the state of Florida's goal of 75% recycling, when you take it to an incinerator, it counts. Unfortunately, a couple years ago, when uh, waste management convinced uh, um, Broward County to tear down the north incinerator, uh, you know, that option for us along with uh, other northeastern and northwestern uh, cities went away and uh, it was sold off to another uh, company. But it doesn't matter. We're here and right now this is what staff's recommending. And again, we're going to be working to resolve this issue as quickly as we can uh, to... Uh, to alleviate this option because we're not happy with it. We would love to take it somewhere else, but unfortunately that's just not the case right now. But we'll certainly be coming forward with some other alternative in the very near future. Okay. Elio, is there anything I missed that you yeah. want to cover operationally? Commissioner Miller. I, I come into this tonight um, with the idea of a uh, going going forward with this so we don't abruptly stop our recycling because I don't think we've had any time to educate our, our, our homeowners and everybody that lives in Deerfield that we were about to put the brakes on recycling but I I think when you throw in the contamination wild card if we don't have a serious educational process and it might take another 
now that I just realized I didn't think of before, I was thinking we might have to go with the small bins again, paper and aluminum and, and such and cardboard. But then I realized without a cap on it, that becomes um, contaminated by rain. Um, there is a lot to think about. Um, but I think, I don't know we have all the answers tonight, and we do have a four-month clause that we can cancel this. And if we work diligently on to come up with a plan B, I think that's what the manager is suggesting we do. Go ahead with this, and um, but diligently come to come with an alternative and educated our our, our, our people that live here that we, we're going to have to – status quo does not work. The, these big blue bins are being contaminated, I think, probably more than, than we like to believe. So I'd say we have to put – uh, our, our recycle, or our, 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 whatever we call our people that collect the garbage, um, we need them to be diligently coming up with a plan. And if they can come up with something in four months, that we can say now we we'll vote on an alternative to this. Let's do it. But let's not. Hey, I'm I'm, I'm going to make a case that we move forward today because I don't want to eliminate recycling in total. But diligently come up with a plan that we can make an alternative, whether it's separate containers or something, so we could cut down on this uh, contamination. Yeah. I think contamination is a wild card. It's going to cost us a lot of money. And if we uh, just say this is a year, I don't even want this to go a year without m modifying how we do things. So uh, I I'd be willing to say do it with uh, time certain that we're going to come up with an alternative, maybe four months from now. Thank you. City Man or excuse me, uh, Commissioner Drosky. I get a promotion, or is that no. a demotion? <laughs> uh, I like my colleague from District One. Um, I, I'm not prepared to pull the plug on recycling tonight. I mean, it's it's too much information, too short period of time. Uh, the public education component has just not um, taken place. And, and can you imagine, you know, if the residents read tomorrow that they have to put their recycling in the garbage? Like I said before, after we have basically told them for years um, you know that recycling is good for the environment but oh now by the way we're putting it in the in the in the landfill we're, we're almost a victim of our success is because we went to single stream you know recycling years ago so that we could be more efficient on our recycling and and pick up these products and and get them to market and that's when the AMV on them were very high and we were making money off of them I mean now I have a sheet here some of the AMVs I mean glass for example um, is negative $3.62. So we lose $3.62 a ton on, um, on glass. Uh, plastics, what, three through seven is a negative $1.14. Uh, and then I could keep going here. The only um, aluminum <coughs> is where the money is, is $20.16. That's the highest one on the, on the, on the, sh on the sheet here. Um, so there are that, those opportunities. We do have a four month out. Um, the city manager says staff is taking opportunities to find out whether options are available. I mean, I for one know that there's another option available is we're missing in our city um, opportunities to build certain segments that are getting recycling for free now. Um, if those segments were, were built, and I'm talking about our commercial and, and multifamily, um, that would offset this particular cost um, that we would have. So we're not it's not chicken little the sky is not necessarily falling for the city of, of deerfield beach we have other opportunities that are that are out there that i think need to be more fully explored before we totally pull the plug because once we pull that plug i don't see any 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 going back city manager thank you i'd like to just bring up mr lorenzo again to speak a little bit about the logistics of going back to the open containers because it's not as simple as just flipping a switch there's a lot more logistics to it and you know there's other negatives for it so yeah. go ahead thank you city manager um yes if right now just to make it simple and you know, i don't want to bore anybody here with a bunch of stats but currently our our uh, average homes per route, it's about a thousand a day, a little over a thousand a day per, per driver per route. We have three residential recycling routes. If we go back to the bins, that's about adding three more trucks. So you would have six routes instead of three. So you're doubling your, your operational cost because it's about 500 a day. You've got to spend the capital on reverting back to the bins. And like uh, waste management mentioned earlier, it doesn't help you with the contamination. It actually makes it worse because you're under the elements. Could we have, um, 
smaller wheel bins that have caps on them? I mean, just another one, uh, one for cardboard, one for aluminum or something like that. You know what I mean? So we're recycling, but we can still use our same equipment to load them. It'll go in the same truck. Oh, so you don't, there's not a yeah, truck that could take that, three. Uh, yeah. Okay. So you cannot sort it in the truck. Okay. okay. And just quickly to add to that, uh, Commissioner Miller, if you do that, then you have the upfront capital of buying new carts <laughs> for each yeah. of those materials. Vice Mayor Bell. That was going to be my question. Um, who's going to buy these? And is that a cost that would be passed on to the citizens if we decide to uh, buy those bins? I don't have the answer for that right now. That I would be discussed with staff to see which direction we're going to go if that is an option. You, do, do you have any uh, idea what the uh, cost of those bins would be? I have no idea. In regards no to idea. the two bins, the uh, yeah. the old dual stream, no, I do not. Okay, thank you. City Manager. Uh, just to uh, answer some of Vice Mayor Battles, I don't have any uh, details for you at this point, but that's certainly something that we can review and bring back to you and it, it, whatever we do recommend will we'll certainly include those types of costs with the uh, options. Thank you. I have a question, <clears throat> if I may. Commissioner Pardes. I have a question here. Let us assume we sign a contract today with waste management. From what everybody is saying, the prospects of another mystical company coming out of the sky at a lower price is about the same odds of my growing to be six foot by tomorrow. So we sign a contract. What incentive do they have to either renegotiate, lower our prices, or just stick it to us? Yes, you can cancel them four months from now, three months from now, tomorrow. How does that help the situation? Somebody's got to explain that to me. Because I don't see any advantage in signing with this. I just don't. It's going to cost more money. People have been contaminating the garbage with recyclables for years. I don't see a change. And as much as I'd love for everybody to be Johnny Two Shoes Goody, we'll recycle everything the way it's supposed to be. When it's raining and you're dealing with seniors and they have to walk out 50 yards to the recycle bins, it's all going in one spot so they can get out of the rain. And that's not going to change. So it's a hard decision. I'm for green space, and I just don't see this as a solution. Sorry, I don't. Thank you. City Manager? Well, I didn't know if oh, I you were wanted grabbing us the mic. to I wasn't sure if respond you were, to that okay. or not. You seem to have abandoned the light system, yeah. so I wasn't sure. No, I was just waiting. Okay. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Miller. So if we didn't go along with this contract, which is something I didn't have in mind going along with, but we, um, so then we just let people put their contaminated recycles in their blue bins like they've been doing. We just cart it off to the, to the regular dump, right, right. So, and then we wouldn't have a contract with waste management for the recyclables, which I think is going to be more expensive than we realize. Um, with that same mandate to come up with an alternative where we want to uh, do it, uh, I mean, I'm trying to think of what would be more economical. Signing this one with the idea that we could get out of it when we can figure out an option, uh, uh, something different, or stop it now, let people continue what they're doing and just take it a different place. But we go on, educate people that we've had to take it to dump because it's too contaminated to, that's, you know, we're going to raise your taxes or you're going to have to stop contaminating your recyclables. And um, that's, that's, that's your job. So short term, we're not going to raise your fees, but we're going to take it to the dump. But we're working out something. And when we've got an alternative, then we institute the alternative. 
and I'm back since waste management is the only place in town, we come back to them with very low contamination uh, options and, and see if that might help us out. Or if even the same deal, but we figured out how to make it less contaminated. Right now, I think we're going to get killed with the contamination clause because I think, even in my own house, we might put recyclables in a plastic bag and put it in and didn't realize that we were contaminating the whole, the whole blue cart. So, I mean, I, I think there needs, needs to be a major education to our folks. Fiscally, it might be wiser to just take it to the dump right now while we're figuring out the alternative and then institute the contract with waste management. That, so my, I came in thinking do the contract and then figure it out. Now I'm thinking maybe we should not do the contract and figure it out and then come back to waste management to make a contract. They are the only place in, to, to go to. So uh, it's just the cause. I think the unknown is the contamination. I think the contamination is much higher than any of us realize when you realize it's not just stained pizza boxes. It's putting in plastic bags from Publix. Uh, well, you're putting your plastic in them to cart it into the blue thing. We're, I think every household is contaminated. So um, I don't know. That. I, I'm still not exactly. I'm going to listen to the uh, city manager to help guide me what would be the best way to go. Status quo or maybe stop it and then still have a higher incentive to move forward with our alternative. City Manager. Yep, thank you. So just quickly, number one, we would not raise taxes. It would be fees, fees. and we wouldn't necessarily raise them across the board. It would be selected, whether it's commercial, multifamily, residential. It, we would determine all of that in the near future. Can't say what, where it would land yet, but I do think Mr. Lorenzo, can speak to you a little bit that there is a uh, added cost taking it directly to the landfill that I think Mr. Soroko brought up. If you want to cover that again, yeah. I mean, if we dispose it as forty-one dollars a ton, I mean the the difference is that you're still disposing at a, at a higher cost, but you don't have the unknown factor of contamination because in the long run it could be higher if you you know process as recycling. But that's the part that we don't know yet. We haven't started the contract yet in order to figure out what point of contamination it's going to be. My understanding yeah. it was always contaminated, but it used to go down conveyor belts and people would pick out the things that didn't belong, but it was still enough money that it made money. Yeah. So, but now we can't do that anymore because it's not worth anything. So it always was, but the literally people were on each side of a conveyor taking the stuff out that didn't belong. But um, I guess that doesn't work anymore since China stopped taking all the recyclables. I, I, I'm just, my original thought was to go with this contract with the idea of canceling it as we come up with an alternative or one way or another figuring out how to reduce our contamination to make it so it doesn't kill us with the fees. Whichever way will end up costing us less in the short term or the long term. Thank I'm not you. sure. City manager? Yes, yeah, thank you. I was getting ready to turn my light on. I wasn't sure if you were going to speak or not. So number one, Mr. Gresick and his staff have looked at the alternatives. If we thought it was in the best interest of this city to take your recyclables or the citizens, the city's recyclables to the trash um, to MSW disposal, we would have certainly recommended that. I thought he kind of said that, though. I, I well, thought he no, did he, say that's where it's going. I mean, that's going to, if we don't come up with a better alternative, well, that is what we're going to end well, up doing. Well, no, actually, what Mr. Gresick was talking about was for the short term to go into this contract, which I agree with, and then try to turn around and figure out some alternative as quickly as we can, bring it back to this city commission for your consideration and then move forward that way. And that consideration very well may be that we don't recycle certain materials or we don't recycle at all. But to make that decision tonight on the fly without really getting the public to understand why, uh, I think it'd be a bad uh, recommendation on our part to say stop recycling. D there is a cost, we understand that, but there's also a cost um, to taking it to the uh, MSW disposal. And yeah, there is potential for uh, contamination, but you know, we'll constantly review the data and make sure that 
uh, we're not in non-compliance with that and if we're showing that it doesn't make sense then we'll uh, take no notice give notice to waste management and we can stop taking recyclables well, we are, and I'm going to make a motion that we approve it based on the manager's uh, recommendation but eventually I mean right now I'd probably say uh, maybe one of our recommendations we only recycle aluminum because that's the only place we can make any money on it or, or be a positive in fact instead of negative but I'll let the experts come up with that I make a motion that we move forward and pro uh, adopt the um, contract so before we get a second Commissioner Drosky you had your light on does anyone know what our contamination rate is I think that's an important piece of information to have to if we're not going to go the contract route I think we need to know because we're making a lot of assumptions that we're going to have a high contamination rate and we very well might, but it'd be nice to know what our contamination rate is to to put all of this together. I don't know that information on top of my head right now. I'll have to get that for you and get back to you. I think uh, they need it. They're looking for a, an answer. Oh. So can you give them oh. an estimate? That's, you well, have uh, to be anywhere between 20 and 30%. Yes. Then, then I don't want to give you an exact number that I wasn't sure about, but it's in that range. So what is, all right, hold on. Let me look at the contract. Um, Commissioner Drosky, if I may, I think I know where you're going with this. Um, so if it's 20 or 30, let's say it's 30%, the first 10% we don't get charged for, so it's that delta of 20%. And as I understand it, there's a $55 contamination charge. So that 20% gets times by the $55 charge. So you're looking at an $11 reduction per ton from whatever revenue you got on the revenue side. So, that makes so if everything else added up to, let's say, $100 per ton, keeping the numbers easy, you would then reduce $11 from that amount based on contamination. And Ms. Herrera, does that sound about right, the way I explained that, the way the contamination charge works? Did that make sense? I tried to keep it simple, sorry. Okay. We have a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Yeah, I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. We have roll call, please. Commissioner Drosky? Yes. Commissioner Parnez? No. Commissioner Miller? Yes. Vice Mayor Battle? No. Mayor Gantz? Uh, no. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Uh, so we'll, I'm sorry, and just no, quickly, so we'll work uh, to change over the logistics starting tomorrow, basically, um, from uh, recycling to garbage, and we'll certainly uh, have Ms. Medina Stewart put the information out right now. Thank you. Item A1 is a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Deerfield Beach approving the execution and transmittal of a hazard mitigation grant application to Broward County. State Division of Emergency Management under uh, Federal Emergency Management Which Agency it, Hazard Mitigation this. Grant Program. To fund City Hall hardening and drainage improvements, authorizing acceptance of hazard mitigation grant funds and execution of a grant agreement. City Manager? Yes, just quickly. This basically uh, gives authority to the mayor to sign this grant. Normally I can sign it, unfortunately. In this case, I cannot per FEMA rules, but I will have Mr. Santucci just give a little bit more of a summary about what this grant will be for. Thank you. Good evening, David Santucci, Assistant City Manager. At the last uh, evening of the budget workshops, I did discuss this grant as one of the efforts that we have with emergency management. Uh, on actually, the next day, we met with Broward County, had some discussions with them about our submittal. Um, where they gave us some guidance uh, and uh, told us that we should obviously get the mayor's signature on that. The purpose of the grant is to um, hopefully assist us with some of the mitigation efforts related to City Hall, including a re-roof, uh, hurricane impact windows, doors, um, hardening of the building, those sorts of measures. It will be a phased grant. Um, because as you know right now we are just in the architectural design criteria package phase so we will submit for that portion hopefully get awarded and then once we're under contract for the construction it'll be a phase two and um, we'll see how that award goes as well 
obviously keep the commission apprised of this award as it obviously does affect this uh, large bond project and could um, affect the cost in a, in a positive way and so we will certainly keep you aware of, of how that grant submission goes okay. anyone from the public here to comment on this item not seeing anyone from the public I'm going to close it to the public Commissioner Drosky I see the deadline to apply for the grant is July 6 which is this Friday but when did we first learn about this grant when did we know we had a deadline of Friday? I think the only thing that changed on this was more the fact that they wanted my signature than it was anything else. Is that correct, Mr. Santucci? That's the only thing that we're changing? Basically. I don't remember approving this for the city manager, but. Mr. Santucci, any comments? I'm sorry, Commissioner Drusky, I didn't fully hear the comment. Did we previously approve this for the city manager to sign? We have not submitted this grant before. So now I'm confused. Because it sounded like what the mayor was saying is that the purpose of this was to have his signature on the grant, but that would have been if it was previously approved to have the city manager on it. But if it was not approved previously for the city manager, when did we learn about back to my original question when did we learn about this grant we learned about this grant just about I want to say four weeks ago we attended a special meeting at the uh, county emergency management myself um, our, our grant our grant staff and uh, learned that they the deadline which we originally thought was um, August 6th to get the submission in was actually the deadline for the county to get it to the uh, state and so our actual deadline was July 6 okay because you're cutting it awfully close we are and you know I'm not a fan of add-ons so that's kind of where I was going with this but I understand now do we want to make a motion I make a motion to approve Second. We have a motion and a second. A roll call, please. Commissioner Drosky. Yes. Commissioner Parnes. Yes. Commissioner Miller. Yes. Vice Mayor Battle. Yes. Mayor Gantz. Yes. Resolution of the City Commission, item number nine. Resolution relating to the provision of fire rescue service facilities programs of the City of Deerfield Beach, establishing the estimated rate for fire rescue assessments for the fiscal year beginning October 1, 2018. Directing the preparation of assessment for all, providing for a vac vacancy adjustment procedure authorizing a public hearing and directing the provision of notice thereof and providing an effective date. Good evening, Mayor Gans, Vice Mayor Battle. The item, <coughs> excuse me, the item before you represents the city's preliminary assessment rate resolution for fiscal 2019. Your approval of this item will enable us to transmit our preliminary rates to the property appraiser who will then use these rates for the trim notices or the trim for the benefit of the audience is the truth in millage, which is the preliminary tax notices that go out in August. So essentially you're giving us approval to place this rate as indicated in the reso on the tax bill in August. And the final hearing will be held on September 30th, 13th. Commission comments before I go to the public. Commissioner Drosky and Vice Mayor Battle. This is just setting the ceiling, correct? We can always yes, it, it is setting the from ceiling. Prior years, you can always go down, but you can't go up. So Pre you're recommending keeping it at the 175, and we can always change it later. You're correct. Thank you. Vice Mayor Battle. That was my question, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Mr. Dunkley, uh, Commissioner Parnes? I'll make a motion Before we do it, I'm going to go to the public if that's all right. Um, we'll, we'll hold your motion for a moment. Uh, Glenn Sullivan?
Glenn Sullivan, 2377 Deer Creek Trail, Deerfield Beach. Um, I just wonder if, maybe not tonight, obviously, but if we can get some kind of uh, explanation that identifies the intent of the fire assessment so the citizens can understand if the current rate is adequate. Obviously, the fire assessment does not cover the entire cost of BSO fire. So is there a subset of those costs that, that this assessment is meant to cover? This is critical to the taxpayer to understand if the rate requested is actually sufficient, too much, or too little. So an explanation of what it covers and what it doesn't cover would be good. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Not seeing anyone coming forward. I'm going to close it to the public. And we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. A okay, motion and a second. We have a roll call, please. Commissioner Drosky. Yes. Commissioner Parnes. Yes. Commissioner Miller. Yes. Vice Mayor Battle. Yes. Mayor Gantz. Yes. Item 10, a resolution of the City Commission of the City of Deerfield Beach relating to the collection of nuisance abatement service says assessments, adopting, finding to fact, directing, preparation of an assessment roll. Mr. Dunkley. Mayor Gans, the second item is similar to the preliminary fire assessment rate resolution. What it does essentially, it gives us the authority upon your approval to place these items or the, the assessment roles as indicated on the tax bills for the specific owners which for the affected properties. The assessment roles have been indicated what particular properties are affected and the properties have gone through the code enforcement process for which the city has incurred expenses to mitigate the nuisance, for example, mowing lawns, boarding up properties, and the like. And so we're asking for your approval so that we can move forward in placing these items on the trim notices. Thank you. Vice Mayor Battle. Just very quickly, um, and, and I understand that the, these folks have gone through the process uh, with, the, uh, with, with the magistrate and everything, and we've had to do something come in in order to get the property where it needs to be. And I, as I was looking on this list, um, and, and I don't know how we, let me back up and ask the question. Um, at this particular point, if a homeowner wants to do something, can he or she do that and, and, and come into compliance? Absolutely, Commissioner, Vice Mayor, absolutely. As a matter of fact, we maintain constant contact with the property appraiser staff up to and including the date of the final assessment hearing, which is September 30th. The affected property owner has the ability to cure the situation pay the fines and the related costs, and then we will no doubt remove that property from the assessment roll. Now, but this question is for the uh, city attorney. Would I be in violation of some rule or regulation because I know a couple of these people on here and uh, in terms of talking with them and telling them that they need to do something about their property? Well, no, advising them to uh, come into compliance is, is I, I think, is, is certainly appropriate. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, anyone from the public care to speak on this item? Not seeing anyone from the public, I'm going to close it. J just so everybody realizes, this is all part of what we did, ten, well, the commission did over 10 years ago with the abandoned property ordinance. And, and then when it was amended a few years later after that, this allows for the city to recoup its cost because what would happen is we would come in, we would do nuisance abatement, we would mow a lawn or take care of some sort of uh, egregious code enforcement issue, and we would find them, but we'd never get our money back because it would just pile up and it, we never got any money until uh, they, they actually sold a home. If there was a lien on there, that did nothing. But when we went to the Florida, I went to the Florida League of Cities uh, meeting years ago, and Port St. Lucie during the height of the uh, Bannon prop or the height of the um, foreclosure uh, situation was basically doing something a little bit different and they were aggressive and they put it on the tax rolls There's a couple things you can't avoid death and taxes so uh, that's how we get reimbursed so last year 2017 we were reimbursed for 18,508 
2018, forty-eight thousand three hundred and sixty-seven dollars, and 2019, we're looking at twenty-nine thousand three hundred and fifty-seven dollars. So, um, I would hope that we would approve this. Move for a motion. Motion. Second. Commissioner Parnas, did you have a comment, or are you no, making a motion? Make the motion? Okay, we have, we have a motion and a second. We have roll call, please. Commissioner Drosky? Yes. Commissioner Parnas? Yes. Commissioner Miller? Yes. Vice Mayor Battle? Yes. Mayor Gantz? Yes. Comments by the City Administration, City Attorney? Uh, none, ma'am. Yes. City Manager? Yes, thank you. Just uh, quickly, we do have the the 4th of July celebration that's coming up on Wednesday, uh, both uh, BSO public safety departments as well as our Parks and Recreation Department have done a very good job of preparing for this. We're expecting upwards of probably 80,000, about the same amount as last year. Uh, BSO has uh, taken security to uh, a higher level because of that, but we don't uh, foresee any issues. All intelligence uh, certainly uh, shows no signs of any attacks here in Deerfield or Florida for that matter. So I don't have any concerns on that. Uh, quickly, we hope to uh, have the fiscal year 19 budget to the city commission sometime towards the end of July. It all depends on when the state of Florida provides its actual revenue forecast or estimate to us once we have that will compile the budget. Uh, as I said, the expenditures probably will not change. And uh, the last thing is, unfortunately, if I could uh, have uh, Chief Seavers walk up here real quick. Uh, earlier this, this afternoon, uh, Chief Seavers came in to meet with Mr. Santucci and me, and he will be uh, retiring in a approximately 30 days he's uh, moving to North Florida to take another uh, position similar to this and uh, you know, he'll be closer to his uh, daughters up in Tallahassee so we're we hate to see him go but we certainly understand why and I'm the reason why I'm bringing him up here tonight is I'm not sure he'd be here for our next uh, City Commission meeting so thank you Chief, do, is it okay if he says a few words? Uh, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Uh, I really want to thank uh, the city of Deerfield Beach. This has been a, a wonderful experience. It's, uh, it's been a little over five years for me. Uh, and coming here, you know, this is real family, and I really appreciate it. I am moving to uh, Ormond Beach. Uh, I'm going to be the fire chief up there. It was just a, a wonderful opportunity for me. I was going to retire in Ormond Beach uh, after my stint here in uh, Broward County. Uh, this just kind of came about, so it was just a wonderful opportunity for me and my family to relocate. Uh, I really couldn't turn it down, but I was—I want you to know I was so torn. Uh, you know, these, these firefighters that work here and, and the city staff that I work with every single day in Deerfield really made a difference to me and this commission and your support, so I really want to thank you for that opportunity. I'm glad I had the time that I, that I did here in, in Deerfield Beach with everyone. So I just want to say thank you. I'll be around. I'm here until uh, August 10th. Uh, but I just want to say thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Chief, we're stunned, but you did an amazing job, and it was a pleasure to work with you, and I cannot thank you enough. You were the uh, best fire chief we've had here in the city in, my, in, in the, all the years that I've been here. So thank, thank you, you so very much. much. Appreciate that. <laughs> Uh, commission comments or city manager anything else for you no that was all that was it okay yes. commission comments district one just so I have an understanding uh, next Sunday night I'm not putting on my blue cart <laughs> we're not having recyclables anymore as of right not tonight no that when is this going to affect? Well, it goes into effect immediately. We'll send out information uh, as soon as we can. However, we'll probably still have people put it in the blue carts, and we'll just pick it up as trash and deliver it to Okay, so Ron, we'll still sector. put our contaminated and recyclable stuff out. It'll be picked <laughs> Again, up. Again, we'll, we'll send out appropriate information. I don't want to Okay, so we don't any. stop putting out the blue carts as of right now. I just I wasn't yeah. sure. 
yeah, basically, no. But um, let us just get back to you while we try to get this uh, re-aligned, uh, so to speak. But basically, I would ju we're going to continue it the way it is, not to make it more confusing for the public. Thank you, Mr. Manager. You. And um, have a great Fourth of July. District 2, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I really, I don't want to take up all the time, but uh, Chief uh, Snackenberg, I really need to see you. We're having a terrible problem in the neighborhood with running four-way stops. And there's some other, you know, that the road patrol needs to be more visible in the area. But I need to get with you. I'm not going to belabor the issue. Everyone uh, have a happy holiday. And uh, I'm going to go home and get some rest. The voice goes and comes at this bronchitis. Thank you. Commissioner Parnas. Yes. Um, as the commission knows, there is no viable park in District 3. And since we have plans for Tam O'Shanter, I threw this out the other day. I would really like your support in naming it for the commissioner that got us the 50 acres, Commissioner Marty Popelski, and I'd like to see his name on that park with your approval. That's all I have. Thank you. Commissioner Drosky. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, next Saturday, or this upcoming Saturday, rather, July 7, is my first of the month Saturday office, Saturday office hours, so that will still be on despite the um, holiday and I do want to wish everybody a happy Independence Day I think the story of the founding of our country is the greatest story that's ever been told and it's really easy to forget you know the origins and genesis of, of this country uh, and how we started by overtaking the greatest superpower in the world at the time from our meager existence to where we are today that we can sit here in this chamber uh, and exchange different ideas and shake hands uh, at the end of the day and all walk away so uh, just keep that in mind, you know, burgers and hot dogs are fine, uh, but just for a second, remember really what, you know, what we're celebrating on Independence Day. Mr. Mayor, if I may. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I, I was uh, remiss in uh, thanking staff for the awesome job that they did on Saturday morning. We had a full house for the um, code enforcement uh, workshop. Uh, I have received nothing but great uh, comments about that workshop. If you missed it, you missed the treat. So I want to thank staff for that. They did an awesome job, and perhaps in the near future we should do one in each section of the city, even though people came from all over the city. And uh, we were out there, uh, Commissioner Droski and I, telling everybody that this is what the mayor wants. We want a one deer field. So it doesn't matter whether or not the... Uh, workshop is in district two if you're in district one three or four still come out thank you thank you vice mayor yes. um to answer a couple questions that were put out there that in case you missed it, i want to make sure that um staff is getting with miss o'neill regarding the uh issue with the short-term rentals uh i think i think miss kiss may have left but i believe staff had already gotten with them as well uh the door-to-door -door soliciting uh, that was brought up from April 14, 2017. You cannot force HOAs to allow people to come in. You can't stop. You know, there are two things that are able to go door to door, and that's religious groups and, and political politicians. You may look at them both as scourges, but they're both allowed. But HOAs, you can't force an HOA to say you can let anybody into their HOA to go door to door soliciting. That's not what the intent of that was, and that's not what that 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 was brought forward at the time. Um, yes, road repairs are coming, and that is part of what was approved with the bond issue, and we have uh, road repairs coming. So it's, we certainly know that where the areas that need it are, and we'll make sure that that gets taken care of. As far as health care spending, yes, health care spending is an issue for just about every city, company there is out there in the, in the country, and it goes up all the time. And we have made changes to that. There was a time when it was 100% paid by the city employees, and um, things don't turn on a dime. We've started to make changes on that. We've got, we had staff go in and start digging into our insurance programs and taking a look at it. So when 
it was discovered that we had not only employees that probably weren't paying what, what they should in order to get us to that percentage point, we started, uh, we started negotiating on that. We also dealt with the fact that um, with the retirees that, um, in that situation. So uh, no, it wasn't discovered for a long time, but you know, when we finally said that this is a priority and we need to start taking a look at it, when we were able to do that, uh, we started peeling back that onion and dealing with it. And it's not something that can turn on a dime um, and people should realize that. Uh, the other issue is, um, Recycling here tonight, the issue, the argument we had, you know, I grew up in South Florida. Was, we used to pick up bottles on the way to school and cash them in at the little general store on the way there so we could, you know, get a piece of gum or something like that. And that's the way it was. Things are a lot different th than what they are. I know that put staff uh, in a bind and they made a good recommendation. But in the end, uh, I, I, I feel like it was, a, it was the right thing to do. And I am so tired of waste management and what they have done. Uh, in, in this process, um, I have not liked the way they've handled them, and that I've not liked the way they've handled themselves from the first time we negotiated until now. And that might put us in a hard time down the road to negotiate with them for me coming out so publicly against them. But uh, quite frankly, I, I just don't believe in extortion, and uh, that's what I feel we were up against. So, uh, with that, everybody have a safe Fourth of July. We're going to have a record crowd at the beach. We're going to have a record crowd at the beach. We ask everyone to please be smart and be safe and do not f use firearms as a form of celebration. Do not fire rounds into the sky because what goes up must come down. Can we have a motion to adjourn? Second. All in favor say aye. Meeting adjourned.